should be another great night for baseball as the Cardinals play host to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Game two of this four-game series. Look at that record for the Cardinals at 38-19. The best in Major League Baseball. And welcome to the broadcast booth. That's Rick Horton. I'm Dan McLaughlin. And, uh, Ricky, when you think about 38 wins, 20 of those have come on the road, and now the Cardinals are playing great here at home. Right now, everything is clicking in the right direction. And they're making it look easy, and it's not. But this team right now leads the National League in pitching, defense, and offense, and I think that's just about all the categories that matter. Uh, but they are good with two outs. Their starting pitching has been terrific and have not lost a series since late April. Two teams that lead their respective divisions, the Arizona Diamondbacks and the St. Louis Cardinals. We've got baseball tonight. Your home of the Redbirds, Fox Sports Midwest. Tyler Skaggs for Arizona, tall left-hander. Notice the balance over the rubber. He picks up the target. Curveball is his big pitch, which he is going to complete with a shortened stride. He's going to be on top, elbow above his shoulder, and how about that for a 12-6 curveball for Skaggs. Michael Walk, on the other hand, his good pitch is the changeup, a dominating pitch. He's also very tall, and he also throws it downhill. Notice the claw grip. Modified circle change, well disguised, and it gets hitters out front with the downhill motion. Skaggs and Waka, big pitching matchup. We have some information on the all-star balloting. We'll have that when we come back.
interesting. The first round of votes are in, and they've been tallied up, and the Braves have the only starter position player among the division leaders in the National League that would be voted in right now, and that is Justin Upton, off to a great start, the former Diamondback. Why not this man, though? Yadier Molina. Talking about being off to a good start defines Yadier Molina, and we're going to start with the defense. He has thrown out 11 out of 26 runners. He's done a lot of that in his career. In fact, most teams won't run on him anymore. But offensively, Dan, is where he has been shining. Hitting 350 to lead the National League. A lot of big hits in that. Yachty has become the leader of this Cardinal team, but in many ways, the most valuable player in the National League. In honor of social media night at Danny Mac TV, which is my Twitter handle, I tweeted out that Yachty, in my opinion right now, the MVP of the league. How does he compare to last year's MVP? Well, 308 is Buster Posey. Certainly good numbers for him as well, but you put them side by side. I'm going with our guy on the right. Yadi Molina, Buster Posey, couldn't argue with either one. Yadi is in the lineup again tonight. We'll take a look at the top plays of the season thus far when we come back on Fox Sports Midwest. Previous games and some of the top plays thus far this year. Reeves hits it out to center field. A grand slam! Got him. Strikeout for Jake Westbrook. He also has a shutout. Westbrook was outstanding here. Well hit center field. And it is gone. Matt Holliday. There's another strikeout. Got him! 12 strikeouts as Wainwright goes the distance. And a good start for John Gasty. Long one to left. It's deep and it's gone. Big Mecklen. Off speed pitch. First strikeout for Tyler Lyons. Cut off by Carpenter. Spins, throws. Nice play. Whoa, look at this. Way out of here. Holiday does it again. By Yanni, right on cue. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Ball third strike. He's rearing back and firing that fastball. Got him on the outside corner. Free base hit in the left. Here he comes. We are tied. Freeze delivers. Home run for John Jay. Edward Mahika, a one, two, three, ninth. This should do it. And the Cardinals take game one of this weekend series against Milwaukee. What a win for St. Louis.
by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Designated driver. See your Mid-America Chevy dealer. Log on to stlchevy.com. Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Stink and Shake. Stink and Shake, just no equal. That young pitcher to another one, Michael Walker, just moments ago. This from the camera lens. Our very own Tony West is right behind the pitcher's mound, and Michael Waka making his second Major League start this evening. And both these starts have come at Bush Stadium. Diamondbacks lineup, it's Para Gregorius who moves up to second in this lineup. Then Paul Goldschmidt, Montero, Prado, Kubel, Bloomquist, Pollock, and Tyler Skaggs, who's one for two. Cardinals defense, and we highlight Shane Robinson, six start in center field this season. Waka was terrific, Dan, in his Major League debut on Thursday against the Royals. Seven innings, just two hits. Really deserved a victory in that game. The bullpen couldn't hold it. A lot of rain delays that night and a Cardinal loss, but Waka was very, very good. And the first pitch is a strike to Parra. There are five position players that will hit from the left side in this lineup, and there is that very good changeup. And it's not just the, the velocity, but the movement that Waka uh, really showed in that first start. Downward movement on the changeup. He really does not use his curveball very much, or at least he didn't in that first start. Less than three times. One of his curveballs actually, one of his changeups looked like a curveball. It had so much movement down in the zone. He, he will get strikeouts with that changeup. Again, very well disguised with that overhand fastball, then the overhand changeup. There it is, the strikeout, 93 miles an hour. The fastball from Michael Walker. Gerardo Parr, pretty good hitter. Normally puts the ball in play, but very late on that swing. Gregorius at 313, four home runs, and he has driven in 12 this year. Really good looking young shortstop for Arizona. Better Tough hurry. play here and no play. It's a second infield hit for DD Gregorius in this series. Boy, he can fly, huh? Sure can. He got a good jump out of the box. And Cosma made a good effort, but really no chance to get Gregorius. It's all got to be in one motion, and even if it is, no chance. What did you take away as Paul Goldschmidt digs in for the first time tonight from the first start of Michael Walker? What really stood out for you? I liked his composure. You, you can like his stuff, too. I think that's a very good first answer. Guy throwing mid-90s with a good changeup, not even needing his curveball. I mean, that's enough good news, but he seemed very comfortable for a 21-year-old on a big league mound. And the Cardinals continue to bring up young players, Dan, that just seem to be ready, not just physically, but also emotionally. Working from the stretch, Gregorius a lead at first, and it's a Diamondbacks team that has an awful lot of caught stealings throughout their lineup, in particular with Parra, Prado, Loomquist as well. Kirk Gibson, third year as a manager for the D-backs, was the manager of the year in 2011. And he's mellowed a bit from his playing days. Really? Very fiery player. Yeah, he's a little more low-key, I would say, but certainly very serious about the game. And he has a outstanding coaching staff if you look at their baseball resume. Got... Uh, MVP winners down there guys that have won World Series and there's a look at Steve Sachs the longtime Dodger and your former teammate five-time all-star 14-year major league veteran you've got Matt Williams who's a five-time all-star he's the third base coach Gibson himself the National League MVP in 1988 Ooh, just missed on the outside corner
Two balls and two strikes on Paul Goldschmidt. 330 average, the 13 home runs. He's driven in 47, so he's in the top 10 of all offensive categories, the big three. And he waves at that pitch, and that's strikeout number two, and it comes again on the fastball. High number of strikeouts for the Cardinals pitching staff this year. Very low number of walks. Here's the grip, four-seam fastball. Down in the zone, you see all four seams kind of cutting into the wind. And as players would say, that the four seam gives it more of an opportunity to hop or look like it hops. The sinker is held typically with two fingers with the seams, and the goal will be to have just two seams cutting into the wind and have the ball sink at the last minute. Miguel Montero in that cleanup spot and off to a very rough start. The first third of the season hitting just 202. Three home runs, 16 RBIs, and normally you put up numbers like that, you're not hitting cleanup. Well, he'll be a project for the hitting coach for the Diamondbacks. There's one guy we haven't mentioned yet, Don Baylor. Talk about a career. 19 years in the major leagues. 1979 American League MVP was also the National League Manager of the Year in 95. So he's a guy that's been around and, and knows what he's talking about. And this would be one guy certainly he's concerned about because Montero could flat out hit. And that the numbers for him at 202 just don't seem to compute. He and Molina really have been the benchmarks along with Posey as the top catchers in the league and that swung on and missed that time it's the changeup and he strikes out the side here in the first inning. Nasty stuff from Michael Waka here in the first. That Craig Molina and Freeze Robinson gets the start in center tonight. Cosma and Michael Waka. Cardinals as a team batting 269. Arizona defense 21 errors this season. Second fewest in the National League. They've got Kubel back in there tonight. He's playing left field defensively. This has been a pretty good team for Kirk Gibson's club. Very good defensive club, and they've got a very good prospect going. Also 21 years of age, Tyler Skaggs. He's had one game that came against the Texas Rangers where he gave up just three hits in his six innings. The guy that they got in a trade, he was signed out of high school, and he's become their number one prospect, now getting an opportunity at the big league level. And Dan, when we watch him, watch for the curveball. Throws 92-93, but the devastating Wainwright like curveball is really his pitch big guy as you mentioned left handed anytime that you uh, could be left handed and continue we're going to have a chance to 
whether your velocity stays where it's at or this guy's velocity is fairly decent but even if it drops left handed pitchers have a tendency if they can control the zone to stick around. You always need a left hander you always need that second left hander in a bullpen you need that spot starting left hander. Just to balance out your rotation so you can stay healthy you can play this game a long time he's certainly a very gifted athlete. Numbers for Carpenter overall on base percentage. Just below 400 it's above 400 in this leadoff spot 27 walks 18 doubles. There's a fly ball out to right field para coming on he won't get it to the wall it goes Carpenter hustling all the way at least at third and he'll stop there. Para took a chance and he got burned. Your skags, you appreciate the effort on one hand, but you're looking at a guy on third with nobody out on the other. Para is a very good outfielder. He tried to keep that ball in front of him. Very solid throwing arm for Para. He's one of the game's best, but he does not come up with this fly ball. Carpenter sees it drop and knows he's got at least two. And headed to second, he doesn't even need Jose Okendo by that point. He knows he's going to end up at third base. Matt Carpenter's first triple of the season. Here's Beltron. And Carlos, a home run last night. And it's another fine season being put together by Beltron. The 13 home runs. He's driven in 37. Hitting just 240 from this side of the plate. And it's one ball and one strike. I may have made a mistake early today Dan that I want to confess to you about when Tyler Skaggs was wandering around early today before the game he was having a hard time finding the visitors locker room and I pointed it out to him so if he pitches well today I feel like I probably could have sent him somewhere else and gotten away with him. where would you have sent him I'm not sure send him out send him to the Jones Dome send him to Chaffetz. Told him sorry he's in the wrong building. Oh, there's no game today. I could have said a lot of things. Here's a one-two off-speed pitch that's tapped foul. Remember uh, a couple of years ago, Brendan Ryan lost on his way to Shea Stadium. He said it was Yankee Stadium that the cabbie took him to. And that kind of uh, gave us a little glimpse into the future. And you're buying that. The bridge in Brooklyn, I want to sell you too. Mm -hmm. Popped up into shallow center. Pollock coming on, hustling, and Gregorius makes the catch, the shortstop. Back to third, Carpenter, and there's one away. Had to come a very long way to make that catch if you're Pollock, so. D.D. Gregorius in our Plaza Tire Service replay puts it away. A couple of fly ball adventures in the early going for Arizona. Again, second in the National League in defense. Carpenter just in case. Doing the smart thing, tagging up. You never know. And if there's a collision there, maybe he takes off. So no sense not being prepared. In steps Holiday. He's driven in 30. He's hit eight home runs, but the average at 245. And it's scary to think once he really gets going. And David Freeze to an extent, despite the fact of the hit streak, it looks like he's back on track, but the numbers aren't where they normally are with those two. Scary to think of where the numbers for the Cardinals may be. And Matt Holiday will have his numbers before it's over. I don't have any doubt about it. He's hit so many balls hard this year and you look at the batting average. I'm frankly a bit surprised that it's as low as it is. And he'll go through some times where he's kind of doing some weak infield ground outs and it may be off balance a bit but. When he's right. And he drives one out to center Pollock will make the catch tagging up. Matt Carpenter. It's one to nothing St. Louis and Holiday has his 31st driven in.
Carpenter on third because of this misplay and right by Gerardo Para turns into a triple. Carpenter scores his 47th run of the season. He leads the National League in that department. Two outs, nobody on for Alan Craig. Alan Craig hosted a young fan at the ballpark yesterday and that fan from Cardinal Glennon Hospital and Allen of course joined the team of Matt Holliday and David Freeze the homers for health team. They have already exceeded what they did all of last year and they're trying to get those donations up to 4000 per home run and you can donate any amount Glennon.org. that's Glennon.org, and it really is making a difference had a chance to see that firsthand. The renovations the additions they made for the kids that in particular are suffering from cancer. So it's a great program. Great program and I always felt for a young man getting a chance to have his dream job of playing Major League Baseball where the whole world's looking at you and think you think you're somebody you probably you really aren't. It's a good reminder. to kind of come back into the reality of life that, that others have needs and and that your world maybe isn't as important as you think it is. I think it's kind of a humbling aspect for a professional athlete that's very, very important for him. Curveball and he laces it to third. Prado makes the play. The RBI by Holiday is 31st in St. Louis on top. And one of our favorites who uh, tweets at us, Rick, is Shoe Repair Lady. And uh, she's been a Cardinals fan since 1965. Twitter Delight, one of the hashtags. And it's part of the St. Louis fan takeover here at the ballpark. Look into my eyes. That young man. Father and son at the ballpark. I always say it, but nothing like it. My dad passed, and we used to come down to the ballpark all the time. Grew up in South St. Louis, Rick, about uh, 10, 15 minutes from where we're sitting uh, right now. And some of my favorite memories, thinking about my pops and being at the ballpark. And your favorite player was? Ozzie Smith. My favorite player still is Ozzie Smith. There's a grounder that is backhanded by Carpenter and he throws off stride and makes the play. Retire there it is the first out of the second. Martin Prado. You Carpenter, grew up a, a Mets fan, right? I did. I did. 
I've got that all figured out, though. After the Cardinals gave me a uniform. <laughs> Carpenter, paycheck. Carpenter with just one error. Cardinals interior defense has just been phenomenal, especially up the middle. Cosma just one error. Carpenter one error at second. Freeze at one and Craig one at the corners. Really, the infield defense has gone along with what we've seen from the young pitchers and the two of those things together has made this game Dan I, I don't want to say predictable because that I know the fall off of the pedestal and I don't want to say ho hum either because at some point the Cardinals are going to have a bad turn it just happens but the way it's going right now we're getting spoiled I am you just expect to win every you, night. You know, you you played on some great teams. Matter of fact, one of your teammates is managing the Diamondbacks, a team that uh, you won world championship with. There's a look at Chris Carpenter. His health is improving daily. You've got Westbrook, who's making a rehab assignment in Springfield tonight. And Shelby Miller, who has just been sensational this year. Now you have Waka emerge. It's been a, uh, a prospect rich and pitching rich team so far this year. And a team that's expecting to win every day. Very comfortable with themselves. A lot of young players who are being assimilated quickly. Joe Kelly's going to get a start in this series. And you almost have this sense that there's about seven other guys down in double A and single A that we could just kind of call them up and bring them up and have them start to do well. It's just been kind of magical almost the first third of the season. There's a broken bat and the catch by Carpenter. Cardinals get nine hits tonight. Receive a dozen original Blaze Donuts tomorrow for $3.99 only at Krispy Kreme. So Kubel retired and it brings in Willie Bloomquist. So who was your favorite player growing up? Ron Swoboda. Do you have a chance to meet him? The first time I had a chance to meet him was at a old timers game at Yankee Stadium when I was at the White Sox and I was too afraid to go talk to him. He'd also played for the Yankees and he was in our dugout. And as I was sitting there talking with all these great Yankee players, I couldn't bring myself to introduce myself to Ron Swoboda. Al finally introduced him to me years later. Yeah, too nervous, huh? But I was too nervous to talk to him. Brown rule double off the bat of Bloomquist, and the eighth place hitter is A.J. Pollock. Location, a little too middle, middle, inside out swing. Bloomquist has been swinging a hot bat. And there's the off speed pitch, the curveball, and talked about the very good fastball. Plus change up. How about the breaking ball from Michael Walker? Talked to Brian Eversgird about his curveball. He had him a couple of different times in the minor leagues, although Walker hasn't really been a Cardinal that long for anybody to really see him over a full season. But tried to say, okay, what's the one thing he needs to work on? How about his curveball? And he just looked at me and he said, nope, that's good too. And I said, how about his mound presence? Nope, that's great. I mean, you could not find a coach that would say a negative thing about Michael Walker or even an area to improve for Michael Walker. The only issue he has, Dan, is lack of experience. 11 minor league starts. That's it. Full minor league innings. I believe it's 73, right around 73 full innings. As a minor league pitcher, that's not a lot of experience. 2 1 pitch to A.J. Pollock. Now it's 2 and 2. Waka struck out the side first inning. 2 with the fastball, 1 with the changeup. Now it's 2 and 2. Blocked by Yachty, scoots away and not advancing. Bloomquist, he stays put at second. And he could have. Had he read it just a hair quicker. 
you, know, you don't want to make the third out at third base, but just the indecision there cost him. Matt Williams watching really can't make that decision for him. That's just something he's got to read on his own. I think the fact that it's Yadier Molina behind the plate is at least a deterrent. Three and two the count. You have the pitcher Skaggs on deck. Outfield is shallow straight away. And it's a walk. That's another aspect of this Cardinals team. Have not given up many home runs and very few walks along the way. First base open, the pitcher coming up. Try to get him to expand his zone a bit. Pollock, decent hitter at 270. I'm okay with facing this guy with two outs. Boy, over the years, Arizona, we talk about the Cardinals and turning out prospects last couple of the seasons. The Diamondbacks have done that multiple years. Some of those guys have been involved in big deals. Reaching for it, it's a base hit on an 0 2 mistake by Michael Walkup. So the pitcher on the 0 2 pitch sticks the bat out, picks up a base hit to left, and his first RBI, and it ties it up at 1 1. He had him 0 2, will check the location, comes back over the middle of the plate. It was meant to be away, and all he does is drop the bat head on it. Little two out rally here for Arizona back to the top of the lineup and par up. Eleven of the first 15 pitches strikes from Michael Waka tonight. That's taken just a bit low. One ball and one strike. Rick, is there a situation when you're facing the opposing pitcher that you go to, let's say, an off speed pitch a little too much? And in that case, it looked to be the changeup that Waka threw to Tyler Skaggs on the 0 2. For a normal pitcher, you would say yes. You, you would never throw a changeup to a pitcher. But if it, you have a dominating changeup that you feel is a strikeout pitch that's unhittable, I can understand the allure with it and the desire to throw it. Mario Soto only threw changeups to pitchers because you couldn't hit it. You couldn't bunt it. You couldn't hit it. It was just such a dominating pitch. Now, I'm not saying Waka's got Mario Soto's changeup, but pretty darn good. But if you do make a mistake with that changeup and it's flat as that one was, then you kind of kick yourself and say, I wonder how he would have handled 95 chest high probably not very good big gap in right center field one and two the count that's chopped foul I've asked you this uh, before but do you get concerned and here we are it's only early June third of the way through the season but Waka Miller and some of these other young pitchers that have made an impact do you get concerned when you get to, to mid August and you start hitting these innings numbers that uh, guys have never thrown before. Can you ask me in mid August? <laughs> <laughs> Probably could do that too. <laughs> Here's a ground ball, hits sharply to second. Matt Carpenter makes the play. Arizona strands two. Para is 0 for 2. They tie it up. Skaggs the RBI. It's 1 1.
the keys to the game. The Cardinals last two games against lefties and two very good ones Kershaw and Bumgarner. It was really a stat we've been following of late Dan because the Cardinals seem to be having trouble with left handers in the early going but Kershaw and Bumgarner very good pitchers so perhaps they've got it figured out a bit and I think the real answer to that has been David Freeze. David Freeze hitting from the right side and you've got Holiday and Beltron you should do well against left handed pitching. It should not be a problem with this Cardinal lineup. Throw in Alan Craig as well. Cardinals really not a dominated left handed hitting lineup so We'll see how they handle this left hander today. They've already got a runoff up in the first. Pittsburgh in their bowl game against Atlanta with a 4 2 lead. That's in the bottom of the fifth. Pedro Alvarez with his 12 home run. Doesn't hit for average, but he certainly can hit for power. And we saw he can hit the Cardinals a year ago. I'll say. Cincinnati is tied up 3 3. That's also in the bottom of the fifth at home against Colorado. We'll see the Cincinnati Reds Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Should be a good showdown between St. Louis and Cincinnati. There's Yadier Molina. Home run last night. His total has jumped up to four. He's driven in 29. And the 1 0 pitch. Fan in Springfield has tweeted at us, telling us that Jake Westbrook has allowed six hits, one run over two innings at Cardinals Farm. Tweeting at us, and we appreciate that. Jake making that rehab assignment. That's a guy that could take some of those innings away from the youngsters. Part of what social media has done, Dan, and really just technology in general. There was a time where a manager would be interested in moves that his team could make down the road and he'd wait for the report a week later. Somebody would file and mail to him. And this has popped up shallow left center and it'll be the left fielder this time making the catch Jason Kubel. Rick, go ahead. Give your uh, Twitter handle. No, I want you to do it, Dan. No, you do no, it no, so no. well. You are Mr. Social Media. I'll do it, though. Danny Mac at Danny Mac TV. And I'm recording at Ricky H49. Still working on Al. But the two of us are with you tonight, and we would love to engage with you on social media. Dan is firing away as we speak. Here's David Freeze with one out and nobody on. Big Cardinal fan Dan Giesler in Springfield, Missouri tonight watching Cardinals baseball here on your home of the Cardinals Fox Sports Midwest. As Freeze a little tardy with that swing. David Freeze is on Twitter. And he has thousands of followers. And Freeze drives it into right center. At the track, it's at the wall, and it is caught. Oh, what a play. A.J. Pollock out at right center field. Pollock went a long way for that and had to contend with the wall. Thought that ball might carry out over the Bank of America sign in right center. The raw power of David Freeze. There's Pollock. There's the ball. And then there's the wall. Bit of a snow cone on a half jump. And he shows some athleticism. Here's Shane Robinson. A rare start for him. He's in center tonight. John Jay has been in a little bit of a slump. So Shane gets the start with a lefty on the mound. Mentioned David Freeze at it's D Freeze 23 is his handle. 198,000 followers for David Freeze. And one thing I would suggest for those who may be new to Twitter is to just consider following some of the Cardinal minor league players. Interesting 
kind of glimpse into their life and what it's like to be in the minor leagues. One more look at that catch by Pollock. Probably wouldn't have gone out, but he certainly saved a double. And this is hit in the air. Shallow right. And Parra, who's won a gold glove, puts it away. So freeze robbed in center field by A.J. Pollock. 1-1 one, one after two. Why they call it a warning track 101 he reaches the warning track looks back for it shortens his strides a bit and then makes the play up against the wall. One more look at that play by Pollock he actually takes a peek before he gets to the warning track but then that's what, again what the warning track is for to give players a feel for when they may be getting close to the wall. I like the fact that he shortened his steps a bit and made the play under control. Gregarious pops out to his counterpart at short. Pete Cosma. And Paul Goldschmidt will be the hitter. He struck out on a fastball his first time up. Lifts it in the air to center field. Robinson. Ichiro making some history tonight. He has tied Ted Williams on the all time hits list in Major League Baseball. And now I believe he's only eight away from 4,000 professional. Hits for Ichiro combining mm. his numbers in Japan where he was a standout and one of the all time greats. You just wonder if he'll play long enough here to get to 3000. Well he has a Hall of Famer that he just passed and a Hall of Famer that's next on that list. I misspoke he is uh, 68 away from 4000 but regardless he'll get that this year barring injury and a quick inning for walk up. Five pitches, 1-1, one, one, midway through three.
The Chipotle Chicken Club combo back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. And buy five hour energy shots. Cosmo, Waka, Carpenter do up. And that graphic means on your screen it is coming. It's Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming August 17th. Pete Cosma is hitting 254. A lot of folks have uh, tweeted at us on this uh, social media night about the lack of all stars concerning the St. Louis Cardinals. And you're not going to get much past our fans. It is a fan vote, and the Cardinals right now no starters. It is Molina trailing Buster Posey, Beltron, and Braun. And this may change after the news tonight. We're understanding uh, more news by the second here, literally, of the steroid or performance enhancing drug situation in Miami, in which A Rod, Ryan Braun were linked to. That there could be cooperation now from that group that was allegedly supplying those. And so if there's co cooperation, you're going to have names, documentation. Major League Baseball gets involved, and then you're talking about major suspensions. If all the reports are true that the cooperation is going on and that there are dozens of players that are implica implicated, Dan, this is going to be a high magnitude news story over the next couple of months and really over the, this entire season. If you have players like Ryan Braun and others whose name was mentioned and again it's just news we're hearing now but if there are names that are mentioned and all of a sudden they're suspended for a year and they're out of this game and there's dozens of them this is this is huge. Mm -hmm. And many of those names have not been made public yet. So, of course, everybody's concerned who might be on it. A strikeout of Pete Cosma, the first strikeout for Skaggs. As we're underway here in the bottom of the third, but the point being initially that a guy like Carlos Beltran, that uh, is kind of nip and tuck with Ryan Braun for the All Star game votes, right. they jump right ahead of him. Well, in your original point, too, and we talked about it in the open, is that the division leaders are not well represented yet. And it is early in the voting, so fans can certainly change that story, too. But maybe indicative of the fact that the division leaders are good teams with multiple good players having good years as opposed to the one or two players that are having great years. Although in Yachty's case, how can his year be much better? There's the breaking pitch on an 0 2, and Skaggs has strikeout number two. MLB.com at bat, the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Blackberry 10. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Cardinals.com for details. We talked about social media and having a chance to follow some of the youngsters, even guys that are in the big leagues, like Matt Carpenter. Or on Twitter. And it's amazing the amount of fans that we hear from and from the places that we hear from those fans. Europe, Asia, we've had it from South Africa, all over the country. As Carpenter grounds it sharply towards second. Tough play, but made by Willie Bloomquist in a 1 2 3 inning for Skaggs. Could be set for a pitcher's duel here tonight.
the middle of the night here in down under. So there you go. Australia, but can't wait for Cardinals when I wake up. Hashtag STL fan takeover. Like we said, you get them everywhere. That one from Australia. Martin Prado. Very good player with Atlanta. My mind, a very underrated player while with the Braves, too. I agree. Flat out hit. Good defensive player as well. Playing third base here tonight. He's a guy that we've seen in the number two spot before, which I think he's most ideally suited for. He's very good at hitting the ball the other way. Hit behind the runner, kind of a hit and run tight. But with Parra being five for 12 in stolen bases, as you mentioned earlier, running game not really working for Arizona. And Prado, the base hit into center. And speaking of Twitter tonight, AT&T Twitter poll, and I think it's a great question because it's a different way to look at the game when you talk about sabermetrics, and that's something that you and I both follow. I looked at a sabermetrics uh, explanation sheet that had 135 new stats on wow. it. Wow. But these are four that we want you to vote for with uh, out of zone and OPS, I think, is one gaining in popularity as well as war and, and we just want to know what your favorite one is and and they all are ways to explain through numbers what happens on this field and I, I always think that when you've got a baseball guy that likes the numbers you've got somebody that can explain both you've got something I mean the numbers are just numbers without somebody that understands the game but I think to a lot of our fans who understand that in some ways baseball has always been about numbers Dan when, when you hear 500 you think home runs when you hear 300 you think batting average or wins or wins and you know the number 71 means something to people the number 60 at one point did those numbers tell the story a bit brings up the debate as Jason Kubel is at the plate one ball one strike uh, you had a guy that wins the triple crown and yet some say should not have been the MVP and we're talking about Miguel Cabrera last year winning the triple crown and then the argument for those that do look at some of those advanced numbers and metrics and saber metrics with Mike Trout in which way do you go now for me personally I still believe in average RBIs and home runs no question. And in Trout's case, I think they're taking into consideration his speed and also his defense, which right. I think is very reasonable things to consider. But winning the Triple Crown and not being the MVP would be hard for me to understand. This has popped up and a tough play near the line. And Freeze can't get there. And oh, let's hope he's not hurt as he runs into the wall. David saying he's okay and waving off Mike Matheny and the medical team of the Cardinals really awkward finish on this play running into the wall and in my mind Rick we have seen David Freeze play a ton better defensively here in the last two weeks or so there's no question and, and he's trying to stay with this ball and that's why the awkward finish to this play he's trying to get it on the second third hop into his glove. And now he's right on that wall and he kind of slams into it and the side of his head hits it as well. But he says he's OK. Dan I think his offense certainly has improved over the last couple of weeks but his defense has been as good as we've seen it in his time with the Cardinals over the past three weeks. Another pop up into shallow center this time and it's Shane Robinson taking charge making the play. Willie Bloomquist ground rule double that was with two outs back in the second then the walk to Pollock and an 0-2 mistake by Walker to Skaggs drove him in that tied the game up at one Arizona's out hit St. Louis 4-1.
One thing that I'm sure advanced scouting will tell you with Michael Walker or just watching on video which is something that all teams incorporate now. That first start man was he working quickly. It was like watching a, a Jake Westbrook type start how fast he was working. So these Arizona Diamondbacks been noticing tonight Rick they've been taking their time. Not only getting to the box but then stepping out after pitches. It isn't just Michael Walker. We look at the starts of Tyler Lyons and also John Gass. Those are guys that work pretty quickly too. So get the sense that it's become an organizational philosophy in the Cardinals minor league system to just get it get back on the mound do your thing quickly as possible which I'm all for I think it helps you get in a better rhythm. Fly ball lifted into left center Robinson on the move and he won't get it hustling after it we could have a relay no they're going to hold up the runner at third Robinson noted for his defense and he was playing in ball over his head and Willie Bloomquist has his second double of the night but a chance for Walker to get out of this with the eight and ninth place hitters coming up. This is really played well by Shane Robinson and he kind of had that sense that maybe he was going to catch it which I think fooled Prado a bit. I mean in, in some ways Prado's just got a score on this. So he, he's going to get the second base. He's thinking maybe he's going to catch. He's still not sure still not sure. And now the ball's up against the wall and Robinson retrieves it quickly and that's a long double to center that he didn't score on from first base and I think a bit of a base running misread for Martin Prado. Especially AJ. with eight and nine coming. Sure. AJ Pollock now runs could be a premium here tonight. Pollock walked his first time up. Runners at second and third. First baseman is in. That's Craig. David Freeze near the line. And it's two balls and no strikes. This is hammered deep left center field. Robinson giving chase and it's gone. A three run homer for A.J. Pollock. His fifth of the year. With their starter tonight, the lefty Skaggs, that might be all they need. 4 1 Arizona. Waka showing that he's human in this inning. First base open. They elect a pitch to Pollock. Just barely over the left center field wall over the stand usual sign. Again location a little bit too center cut. From Michael Waka. Four hundred and one feet the measured distance of the home run. Check swing and he went nothing in two. Dan only the 33rd home run that the Cardinals have allowed this year. They lead the National League in that department. Strikeout that's number four for Waka tonight. And that time he went on 0 and 2 with the fastball. Remember the previous at bat it was the changeup and a single in the left that tied it up. Try the new egg white delight McMuffin only 250 calories and only at McDonald's. So Pollock RBIs 18 19 and 20. They have given uh, those RBIs Arizona three run lead. There's a fly ball lifted into left holiday near the track and puts it away. So Parham already is over three. He's human after all Michael Waka. 4 1 Arizona.
Carlos Beltran leads it off and the Cardinals in a rare spot trailing in a game four to one Rick Cardinals are on pace for 109 wins that's amazing it's incredible and, and they've been such a solid team in all aspects Dan the defense has been good best in the National League best earn run average under three and they lead in average as well at 269 and they've been a clutch team what else do you want? More wins. I'm well, greedy. Well, I, and I understand the psyche of the Cardinal fans. Once you win, you want more. And you want world championships. And I don't think they're going to be happy with anything less. Matt Gifford, the general manager of Springfield. The Redbirds as... That's pulled foul off the bat of Carlos Beltran and Jake Westbrook making that start tonight. Six hits in three innings, one run. And he is through. Good friend Matt Gifford visiting with the environmental restoration folks of Fenton down in Springfield. And that's fouled back. I think what the Cardinals were most hoping with Jake Westbrook is that he would be able to go out, be pain free. The results are, I guess, at least somewhat important, but the main result is that it feels okay today and that it feels okay tomorrow when he wakes up. Maybe just as important. Big week for the Cardinals in around Major League Baseball. The draft is on Thursday. And the Cardinals holding two picks early on, the 19th and the 28th. One of those a compensatory pick, the loss of Kyle Loesch. Cardinals actually have four picks in the top uh, 80 or so. So it could be another big draft for St. Louis. Chopper towards third. And Beltron is the first out. Carlos is over two. Skaggs has allowed just one base hit. Cardinals Fox Sports and the state of Missouri teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Rick is just buried right now in Twitter. I don't know if you noticed this, Rick, but the Cardinals are trailing right now by three runs. So get out of your Twitter feed and start paying attention, mister. I'm, I'm well aware. I'm looking for answers. On Twitter? Yeah. Some of the folks that come up with some great scoops along the way and able to inform us, and uh, we appreciate that. One-zero -oh pitch catches the outside corner. Here's the guy that the Cardinals need to get on track. That's Matt Holiday. Just two for 18 on the homestand. He had a good at bat though in the first inning, producing the RBI. It was a good situational at bat. Carpenter was aboard at third with one out, and that situation called for a fly ball. A long fly ball. That's your job. And that's what he did. 2 1 pitch. That's ripped into left center field. He hung that one, and Matt drives it to the wall. Times Rick when you see that cut and it is vicious and it still catches your attention even though you watch it every single night see it at BP but his eyes lit up on this pitch Walker's missed some location and there Skaggs misses location that pitch right in the heart and when you're as good as Matt Holiday you rarely miss those pitches and in fact when Matt Holiday is hot he can cover the entire strike zone and you wonder how anybody gets him out and and when he's off, he's off. He's human. I sure wouldn't want to pitch to him. No. Now it's Craig with a runner in scoring position. Diamondbacks at 32 and 25. 
played pretty well on the road just behind St. Louis and the Cardinals best record in baseball at 38 and 19. Atlanta's come back to tie it up against Pittsburgh. It's 4 4. Talking about Cardinals having all star type seasons. How about this guy, Alan Craig, at 39 RBIs? At batting average, he's been in the top 10, currently at 318. The home run production down a bit for Alan Craig, but with all those RBIs and the key hits, runners in scoring position, 434. Let's just say he's worthy of consideration. Big gap in left center field. The way that the All Star game is now compiled, as far as the players are concerned, you're talking about a fan vote, managers getting involved, also rules with certain pitchers as far as what day they pitch prior to the All Star game. So there's a lot that goes into that. And also the uh, the final player that gets voted in that final fan vote we saw David freeze win that last year and Craig gets a high fly ball into deep left center will it carry out of here and well it's gone high towering shot off the bat of Alan Craig and we've got a ball game again two run homer for Craig and the lead is cut to four to three. late for Alan Craig now has an eight game hitting streak where he's hit close to 500 strike to Yadier Molina one more look that too center cut fastball and that was Dan you described it very well a towering home run to left center field initially I thought it would be deep but not out of here just enough as Kubel tried to pull it back in. 4 3 game here in the bottom of the fourth, and here's Yachty. One ball, one strike, and Molina, good rip. Reaction of the bench. Come on, baby, get going, get going, get going. Their reaction. All right, back in this game. Here's a one two pitch breaking ball hits sharply to third backhanded by Prado and he makes the play. You've known uh, for years stuff a great place to find the seat you want Cardinals both home and rope StubHub.com. Rick the uh, Cardinals just hit a two run homer and I know you're buried in Twitter but really it's an interesting ball game and contest we have here tonight four to three Arizona. You're back. I'm here. <laughs> I just, you are I just, addicted. I just learned on Twitter that Alan Craig just did something pretty good. Mm -hmm. And a souvenir for that young lady. And all of a sudden now you get the text messages. And she's doing what I'm doing. Multitasking. Absolutely. Watch a little baseball. Get on Twitter. Anybody who's been in a bullpen. For seven or eight years, knows how to multitask, Dan. Let me just tell you that. Well, if they start uh, texting her, tell her to hold up that baseball, start waving at her cameraman to her right. That'll happen shortly. It's pulled foul. You're on TV. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's just overload. It's just kind of blowing up right now, isn't right. it? Mm -hmm. I'm on to my right. No, that's your left, dear. No, yeah, that's, that's right. Wait a minute. <laughs> she didn't read it. She just couldn't handle the paparazzi. And where we're located, it's uh, the Redbird Club, and we have security set up for you nightly. Make sure we can get you through the throng of followers on Twitter. 
Michael Walker. Seen it now cut to a one run lead. And we'll find out a little bit more about Michael Walker with how he handles a little adversity here tonight. Four early runs. And same for Tyler Skaggs. Both these guys just 21 years of age. It's sharply too short. Gregarious makes the play. Freeze retired. He's over two. A two run shot for Alan Craig. Fisher for the Jeff Fisher and Friends Celebrity Softball Game. That'll be June 9th. For details and info, go to gatewaygrizzlies.com slash tickets. Alan Craig, a two-run homer. And it's a 4-3 ball game. Cardinals in the all-star voting where they rank. So Beltron just on the outside looking in. Molina trailing Posey, not by much. Holiday's got some work to do. You have to consider the the pitching for St. Louis as well sure. with the chances of some of those guys you see listed there. And Shelby Miller would be in that. Mujica, Adam Wainwright. And that game will be seen on Big Fox, so you don't want to miss it. And we're about five and a half weeks away or so. Plenty of time to vote. You bet. Vote early, vote often. Here's a 1 1 pitch up to D.D. Gregarious. That's something that the fans of the Giants did a year ago. You know, and the fans can go online and vote. And it can be an online version of the ballot box uh, stuffing. And we saw that with some of those Giants that got an awful lot of votes a year ago. Almost seems as if they ought to introduce some kind of electoral college into the fan voting. If you're going to have a particular team like San Francisco that that votes that way, and then what about the poor guy in Miami right now that might be having a good year, and they are get 15, 20,000 fans. Well, I think you're being generous. Yeah, I'm probably right. And I, I see that. Not happy about it because I think you want to see fans coming out to right. the ballpark, but I'm, I'm to the point, Rick, I can't blame their fans for not coming out. It's a bad product right now. They're not good. 16 and 42, 19 and a half games out. They are 10 and 20 at home. And depending on how you want to view their situation, as Goldschmidt steps in. A lot of fans believe they were sold a bill of goods and ownership did not live up to their end of the bargain of a taxpayer funded stadium. 
may have to ask some of those fans as we go on our next road trip Cincinnati New York and Miami. Talk about teams that. Really are not very good this year Dan you'd have to say the Houston Astros have kind of been on everybody's mind too but they've won six straight games they just swept. The Angels in fact. Get surprised by that. That's a line down the right field line and foul. I mean, think about this. Mike Sosha after the game last night, which they were swept, as you mentioned, by Houston. Manager of the Angels, a closed door meeting for 27 minutes. Albert Pujols, third of the way of the season, hitting 243. Josh Hamilton hitting 216. Houston has won six straight, only four back of the team that many thought would win the West. This is driven right center field. And Gregarious can fly. They're going to wave him in. Goldschmidt thought about three. He'll stop at second base and adding to that gaudy RBI total now at 48. Walker getting hit and ground a little bit here tonight. That's five runs. You wonder how much longer Mike Matheny will go with him. Can Gregorius run? I'll say he can. Went from second to home in a hurry, and the runner at second, Goldschmidt, runs well. Mm -hmm. Six stolen bases, very well balanced player, and shows his power the other way. Miguel Montero waiting for this guy to get on track. There's a changeup and a strike. And clearly, Waka not as sharp tonight as we saw in his debut. Found it really interesting, Mike Matheny addressing a young pitcher listening to Yadier Molina. Uh, with all the press before the game today and he said I don't want anybody to get the wrong impression that they're just blindly following Yachty Yachty is he used the word humble enough to know that every pitcher has their own strength and Yachty in Mike's estimation is doing a very good job of asking the pitcher what he wants to do following him and then giving his expertise into it so it's just not a matter of Yachty puts down a number I throw it you're not developing a pitcher that way. That pitch was up but hit out of play so it's incorporating a little bit of everything. So Michael Walker has got an idea how he wants to get people out. He and Yachty communicate on that subject. Before. Every start in fact Derek Williquist said that the meeting with Waka. Before his first start was about five minutes. They didn't want to overload it. So he's got to do what he's comfortable with and then Yachty helps tweak it a bit and refine it a bit at this level knowing the hitters weaknesses. That's the partnership. That's the give and take. Happy first birthday to uh, Georgia Collins. Who's sleeping right now but mom and dad are not. They're watching. Happy birthday to Georgia Collins. This time was called. Still nobody out runner at second. Two and two the count. Outfield is deep and there's a ground ball to the right side so a productive out in this 5 3 game. Montero 0 for 3 and it brings in Martin Prado. This game is still for the taking though just a two run lead. You get the sense that maybe the Cardinals have a little bit more for Tyler Skaggs and it's going to end up being a battle of the bullpens before it's all said and done. Closer for the Diamondbacks coming out of spring training J.J. Putts is hurt he's out. And they are using Keith Bell in that role. And the last time we saw him, he was struggling to say the least. Last few times, really. Ooh. He's righted the ship a bit, mm -hmm. to his credit. Remember, it was Yachty in spring training as you get a look at Martin Prado that said after the few, uh, first few times he caught Michael Walker, he said, This guy is major league ready right now. Cardinals didn't want to rush him but. Out of necessity to an extent. Needing some starts. And this is popped up on the infield. Big out here for Waka. 
Carpenter puts it away. Cardinals have talked about once Waka is here, Oscar Tavares, it's not going to be that shoveling back and forth to Memphis. They're here to stay. Time will tell. Location, location, location. That pitch up and in. Produces the pop out. Montero has a productive at bat, but Prado doesn't. Here's Jason Kubel. There's the changeup. Broken bat line out to second. Also flied out to shallow center. One ball, one strike. And Kubel, really one of the, the first Diamondbacks to do this, paying attention. They talk about how smart of a player he is, but stepping out against Michael Walker and others have followed suit. That pitch was up, it popped up and into the seats. I think it's a good thing to do against a pitcher that has a dominating changeup because there's always a sense that a changeup is changing up off of something else. And if you put time and distance between the fastball that he threw before it, the changeup doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have the same effect in the pitcher's mind either. When you're working quickly, you're really controlling the pace of the game and you're controlling. How that change up speed messes up a hitter's balance. But when he's stepping out and controlling you, he makes you struggle a bit. Three two lined into left field. And with that, it's six to three Arizona. The bottom of this lineup has done some. Big damage tonight. Key spots, and sure again, has. that is uh, Kubel with a base hit into left field. Always been a good RBI man. Good piece of hitting, as we say. Never say a good piece of pitching. We always say a good piece of hitting, just taking it the other way, and it always looks especially artful when a left-handed batter does it. Check swing and strike one. It's nine base hits allowed by Waka. Two outs here in the fifth inning. His spot is due up third. Pitch count at 87. And the times I saw Michael Walker this spring, and I watched him in side sessions, live BP, then game action, then watching him his first start. This is my first time I've seen him struggle at all. It almost came too easy for him. He had one game in AAA early on, either his first or second start, where it was so so. Had a couple of walks in that game, didn't dominate. Pass freeze and into left field. But it's certainly not a normal feeling for him. And the Cardinals trying to squeeze one more out out of Waka. AJ Pollock, big night already. This catch in center field, robbing David Fraze. And then the big blast in this game, a three run shot that was back in the fourth inning. And it came with two outs. Base hit by Bloomquist knocks out Michael Walker in his second major league start. We'll see the bullpen tonight. Long way to go. It's 6 3.
club offensively has come alive. Ten hits tonight off of Michael Walkup. Well, join us for the second of five Ice Mountain Autograph Nights. That's tomorrow. Cardinals take on the Diamondbacks. Fans 20 and under can get autographs from former and current players. For more details, visit cardinals.com slash promotions. And into the ball game, Seth Maness for St. Louis. It's brought to you by Chevy. Been a ground ball machine. One of the guys that Mike Matheny may have had in mind to get that start in game three of this series that Joe Kelly has been chosen for but Manus with a four and one record ERA just over two has been very good himself kind of under the radar guy in the minor leagues even though he put up big numbers very few walks from Manus and it's kind of a classic role for him Dan to just kind of quiet things down kind of give your team a chance to get back in this game he's capable of going a couple of innings here in the middle of this game and who knows we may look up in the eighth inning and the Cardinals may have the lead and Seth Manus may be in line for victory number five. Tough night for Michael Waka. There are better nights ahead I promise you. Game is so easy when you're winning and you're doing well, and you really find out about a man when things don't go so well. And what everybody says in the Cardinals about Michael Waka is he's a lot like Adam Wainwright, and that gift will serve him well as he tries to go to bed tonight. Hitches up his warm up tosses, our charter high speed pitch of the night from both sides. Skaggs at 91, Michael Waka at 94. We were told that Skaggs topped out at 92, so pretty normal numbers for him. Same with Waka. Both pitchers have not had issues with velocity, they've had issues with location. Too many in the middle of the plate for Waka, and Skaggs has had a couple of mistakes as well, including. Two run home run off the bat of Alan Craig. Cardinals with just three hits, however. Here's Shane Robinson. And he lifts it out to deep left field. And this ball is gone. Home run into the bullpen. 
Shane Robinson, his first home run this year. Cardinals right back in this game. They've hit a pair of home runs. We still have a long way to go, folks. It's six to four. All right, everybody that doesn't like hitters swinging at the first pitch, close your eyes. You don't get to watch this one. Shane Robinson jumping on that first pitch, lines it into the bullpen. Nice to see Sugar Shane with some production. I know he feels good about that. Really the best pitch hitter off the bench a year ago for St. Louis. And it's a ground ball hit sharply to Gregarious. Low throw and Cosma. He's thrown out. One thing about Pete Cosma, another aspect that we really don't talk about. How about hustle? Always hustles down the line. And, and it's never really, you know, you see guys with false hustle too, but Pete Cosma is hustling with a purpose. And he knows that even the slightest bobble at short on that particular play, he might beat it out. Seth Manis, his first career at bat in the big leagues. He stands up there like he knows what he's doing. Skaggs has not walked a batter yet. You know what Jack Buck would say. He wouldn't walk the pitcher, would he? Three and one. One of the many sayings of Jack Buck, I sincerely miss. Main is dropping to a knee and breaking his bat. That wasn't quite the uh, Adrian Beltre drop to a knee, hit it out of the ballpark. But a pretty healthy uh, cut. He's got teammates telling him that the ball's not really carrying the right field right now. Must be some wind at the higher altitudes. The ball just seemed to die about 15 feet from home plate. That's the kind of things teammates say to you. And there's a strikeout in love. What's on tap is brought to you by Budweiser and we'll come your way tomorrow game three of this four game set Paul Goldschmidt has done some damage tonight that RBI total up to 48. He'll be on display one of the top young players in the National League Budweiser what's on tap. And in that ball game it'll be Joe Kelly getting the start Miller on Thursday. Kelly had uh, 16 starts as a rookie a season ago. And Mike Matheny was asked about stretching him out. He said, I'm not too concerned about it. You may remember back on the 25th of May, Mike had to use Joe Kelly for three innings. It was 62 pitches, so got through that okay, and they're hoping he's just a little bit more efficient tomorrow. Yeah, and I think that's the big word for him is efficient. You throw five innings and you throw 55 pitches that's one thing but if you struggle in the first struggle in the second get some deep counts and the next thing you know you're up to 70 pitches in the middle of the fourth that's when your arm starts to wear down a little bit and mentally too it becomes taxing for a guy that's used to being in the bullpen breaking ball waited on it a couple of hops towards second Bloomquist makes the play as Carpenter almost beat it out. Shane Robinson with a solo shot, 6 4 after 5.
available exclusively at a servicing steel dealer. Visit steeldealers.com. And the Cardinals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call the quit line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. The bottom of this Arizona lineup has done the damage against Michael Walker tonight. Now Seth Manus has taken over. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Six hits, five RBIs. There's a broken bat slowly hit to short. And Skaggs, the pitcher, retired. Seth Manus with an opportunity here. I just have the sense that the Cardinals have more runs in them. A couple of long balls already. Craig and Robinson. You're going to see two, three, and four for the Cardinals in the bottom of the six. Beltron, Holiday, and Craig. So Manus' job just... Kind of stop the bleeding and give his team a chance. Top of the lineup in Para. He's 0 for 3. Struck out first time up. Rounded out to second. Also flied out to left. Cardinals have Westbrook coming back. Chris Carpenter slowly returning. And it was Shane Robinson who faced Carpenter, one of the live hitters, if you will, that stepped in and just gave Carpenter a look of a hitter in the box yesterday. And he said his stuff was a lot better than what he saw a year ago in that same spot trying to come back. He may be the best judge of that in terms of where he is on a rehab basis. A lot more work ahead for Chris Carpenter, but still very encouraging. One and two the count with one out. And there's a strikeout. Number two for Seth Manus tonight. Three up and three down for him. That's uh, Matt Carpenter's dog Brooks. We shot that last year. And right now he's reading a promo in which he says I love my dog Brooks. <laughs> and we've got the Perina. Pet Bowl coming up. That's uh, June 22nd. Get your tickets at cardinals.com slash promotions. That's lined foul. We brought him in to do the uh, commercial shoot. He said, you won't believe my dog. Responsive, listens, never an issue. Uh-huh. And then the camera started rolling. Uh-huh. Stage fright even for the dog. <laughs> Took forever to do it. He sensed the tension. He did. But as you saw there, just a beautiful dog. So bring your pet to the ballpark. Not every dog can act. That's what you're saying? Not every dog, but this one, uh, once Brooks warmed up, boy. All the fire. Little tapper to first and handled there by Alan Craig. Hey, it's social media night. Oh boy. Ricky H49, tweet at him.
your favorite sabermetric stat. And 33% war wins above replacement. How about for you? My favorite is whip. I think it tells a lot about a pitcher, not just the hits he gives up, but the number of walks he gives up for nine innings. And uh, out of zone is certainly important for a defender and OPS. Dan is certainly gaining popularity to show the hitter that is not only an average hitter, but also a power hitter. And it's attempt to combine two really distinct abilities, put it into one, and you really get your superstars out of the OPS top five. OPS for me. Cardinals with just uh, four base hits tonight, but a pair of home runs. Six to four, they trail. It's one of the top young lefties in baseball today, really one of the top young pitchers, off to a great start in his, albeit brief major league career, Mr. Skaggs. That pitch was up and a base hit out to left. You get the feeling, Rick, that oh, uh, boy. Cardinals not nearly done tonight. Absolutely. And this will come down to the bullpen. Absolutely. And I have that feeling in this inning, too. Mike Matheny talking it over with Seth Manus. And, you know, you're always teaching, always coaching. Seth doesn't seem very uptight in this conversation, that's for sure. I would hope they're not just talking about that at bat of his, but maybe they are. Maybe he's teasing them a bit. Here's Holiday, a double to left center. Ooh, just missed it, or did he? At the track. And he did. Boy, he just missed it. Beltron tagging up from center field. Aggressive play, and he's in there safely. Boy, is he running better he sure since is. the beginning of... Uh, Regular season play. Definitely and Holiday got, just missed it. He did, Dan, and, not, and Beltron, you're right, is running much better. He reads that early on, just as we did, that Holiday almost gets this. It might go, but probably won't. And he can kind of tell the same thing. So he's going to tag up just in case and get that extra base. Pollock backed up against the wall. Very close play at the bag. Heads up base running by Carlos Beltran. Very nearly had a tie game. Activity now in the bullpen for Kirk Gibson. Charlie Nagy, the pitching coach for Arizona. Another one of those guys that had a very fine big league career. He's probably kind of the uh, on the lower rung of the coaching uh, platitudes over there, though, because he only uh, has three All Star games. So that's all he he was able to do. Right. That's it. Yeah, he's kind of the, the throw in guy with Baylor and Gibson and Alan Trammell. <laughs> About Alan Trammell, six time All Star. Seems like he played forever. All kinds of experience on this Arizona staff. He and Lou Whitaker in Detroit. Fixtures. You could write them in every year, couldn't you? Yep. So here's Craig. Tying run at second base. Alan Craig with a home run, a two run shot back in the fourth. That was his fourth of the year. He's jumped up to 41 driven in. So tying run at the plate. Home run could tie this ball game up. One ball and one strike. One and two. He 
able to get inside with that fastball. I think Alan Craig was probably looking for something off speed there and at least guarding for it and tried to pull the trigger on the fastball, but it was a bit late. So does he double up, come in there again? Or does he go to that curveball? Went to the breaking ball and Craig strikes out. Four strikeouts for Skaggs. Well, the Cardinals really catch a break in this series in which they don't face Corbin. Who, by the way, is on pace to have 25 wins. Not sure he's going to get there, but it gives you an idea of just how well he's pitched. Matt Harvey, the Cardinals missed him in the previous four game series against the Mets. Daniel Hudson, a pretty good starter for this club who went through the Tommy John experience, has begun a rehab assignment, so he's not ready yet either. He's certainly a pro good promising pitcher as well. So some hope down the road for the Diamondbacks. Pretty decent staff. Two and oh the count on Yachty. Molinez fly to left and also grounded out to third and a backhanded play by Martin Prado. Breaking ball and that misses. Beltron is running. Did he run into an out? Oh, goodness, they call him safe. Wow. How did that happen? The throw beat him. Looked like the tag beat him. And Martin Prado arguing, and here comes Kirk Gibson. You know, from up here, that looks hard to believe that he was not called out. Well, Gibson asked Prado, did you get him? And he said something like, yes, sir. We'll just call it that. And Gibson getting some clarification from Jordan Baker our third base umpire Cardinals really get a break here the slide and does he tag him sure does he's out I mean nine times out of ten Major League Baseball throw beat you if the tags somewhere close and clearly he's out a lot of times Wow the glove will come up slightly before the foot and then they sell it to the umpire so the foot does not knock out the ball and umpires give you the benefit of the doubt, but not in that case. And will that prove to be a big play? We'll find out. Three and two on Yachty. Lost on that is Beltron's decision even to try to steal third base. Why? Unless you know you've got it stolen. We've talked about how he's feeling pretty good about the way he's running right now. He may have uh, outkicked his coverage a bit there. Extends the inning. The Cardinals say thank you very much. Molina makes him pay. One run lead for Arizona. That's going to make the Diamondbacks stew a little bit more that Yadier Molina makes it hurt. It's one thing that the call is missed at third base on the Beltron slide. That hurts. But this wow. hurts even more. Wow. Yadier Molina driving in a run the other way.
multi-hit games this season. Carpenter, Craig, Molina, Beltron, all updated. Here tonight, the Cardinals just six hits, but multi-hit games, we've seen a bunch. And you know, all of those six hits by different Cardinals tonight, so no one with multiple hits yet who will be the first one. Yadier Molina got his first hit and his first RBI tonight with two outs, something the Cardinals have been very good at. And will the two-out magic continue with David Free? And Kurt Gibson words now with the uh, third base umpire and I wonder if he got word that you know what you may have blown that call and I'm going to make sure you know about it. Not very typically will you argue a call that happened exactly two plays ago. In fact I'm not sure that's a normal thing and perhaps someone's been thrown out from the Arizona bench. He said that's enough and well he meant it. And that gave Kirk Gibson the right to go back out and. Talk about it some more and with the advancement of technology now you have all the the games that are on television they're played in the clubhouse in the batting cage so. I'm sure. Word got to Kirk Gibson very quickly about. The missed call technology or not Dan we're a hundred and. 50 200 feet away from it and we saw it. Yep. So two outs and a short lead at. First base. Ziegler comes in from Missouri State. The sidewinder for Arizona. David Fries trying to extend his hitting streak today. Ziegler's been busy. Game number 31 for him. Unusual delivery. Most pitchers that throw. From that arm angle, really struggle against left handed hitter. Lefties will say they see the ball very well, they see it all the way, it's really easy to pick up, nothing's moving really away from me that much. But right handers, it's a different story. Ball comes from behind you. One two pitch. Yet you look at this uh, right hander, obviously, it could be very tough, as you mentioned, on right handed hitters, but he works from the first base side of the rubber. Imagine if he's on the other side and basically that pitch is coming from behind the hitter. Clearly more comfortable there but I agree with you Dan I think it makes more sense to make your. Main weapon which is deception. That much more deceptive. By getting on that other side of the rubber. We make make too much of whether or not you throw from the left side or the right side. It doesn't make that much difference, but pitcher's the one that has to have the right feel for it. Yachty off with this pitch. Three two to freeze. David chops it left side a swinging bunt. Ziegler the first safe. Hitting streak continues for David Freeze. The bad call again comes into play. As the inning is extended for St. Louis. And a bang bang play here at first. I think that calls right. I think he's safe, very close. So it's career best 14 games consecutively in which David Freeze has had a hit. Matt Adams be the pinch hitter for Shane Robinson. We'll see if. Kirk Gibson will counter. He's had a lefty throwing in the pen. He 
He does have two lefties, Matt Reynolds and Tony Sip out there. And still has not made the move. Will he make the move? Apparently not. Interesting. Two lefties. Here's Adams. They stick with the righty. And a strike. I like this opportunity here. Adams, been a good pinch hitter, Dan. Five for 13. Hitting streak now at 14 games for David Freeze, the longest streak currently in Major League Baseball. The 0 1 pitch. Matt Adams coming into play. Slugging percentage of 517. As you mentioned, the five hits is a pinch hitter. The tying run is at second base. The go ahead run is at first. Hitting 333 against righties. Took something off that pitch at 77. Almost hit him, almost went back to the backstop. Deep in the outfield, they claim the pole and on the infield as well. 2 2. And he struck him out as Adam slams his bat. In disgust, Cardinals strand two. It's six five as we head to the seventh. Get 50% off a pair of tickets. Cardinals.com slash Phillip 66. It's another tweet. We're currently being spoiled as Cardinal fans. I hope we all can realize how lucky we are this season and this era. Justin Hernandez. I have talking with the, uh, the Cardinals front office, Rick. And they were at uh, ticket meetings. Two weeks ago, and they said they are the envy right now of oh, I'll bet. everybody in Major League Baseball. Well, I think there are people asking the Cardinals, how are they developing talent the way they're doing it, too? Where does Seth Manis come from? Where do you find him? And I'm sure there are other scouting departments saying, did we know of 18 guys that were better than Michael Waka when he went 19th in the draft? And I think the Cardinals not only are going to get called upon for potential trades down the road with some of their people but I think they want to know how are they doing it what is their secret 
minor league level and the big league level and really when it comes down to it you got to always come back to the leaders John Moselock Mike Matheny are establishing some rules and some groundwork so that this organization can be successful and the people that came before them Walt Jockety Tony La Russa, set the bar high as well. Two and one the count on Paul Goldschmidt. No activity in either bullpen and Goldschmidt laces one out to left field. Holiday will have to dig it out of the corner. Goldschmidt as you mentioned runs pretty well for a big man. And he winds up at second base with a leadoff double. His second double tonight and he's two for four. Change up grip. Fingers spread on the ball. Up a little more than he had intended and a little flatter. Change up should be going more down and that one kind of going in towards Goldschmidt and perhaps good news that it stayed in the ballpark. Montero rounds out to first. Or rather to second and uh, advancing from second to third Goldschmidt Fox Sports Midwest.com your home for Cardinals news all season long Stan McNeil longtime writer at the Sporting News now helping us out Ben Fredrickson as well they'll break down Michael Walker's second start also the upcoming draft it's all on Fox Sports Midwest.com Stan McNeil one of the best writers in the nation and he was covering Major League Baseball for a number of years on a national level based out of St. Louis and now working for us. Infield is drawn in for Martin Prado as time is called. If you're wondering the ejection it was Alan Trammell. By uh, Jordan Baker Chris Tuno of the Cardinals PR staff telling us that Trammell was ejected 12 times when he was a manager. This social media night. Make sure you follow Chris Tuno. He's always got good insight concerning the St. Louis Cardinals and stats and news. And not a bad idea to follow him to get connected to some of the other Cardinals that are on Twitter. Certainly you can find them by following him. And you mentioned Matt Carpenter, but Jason Mott always has some fun things to say. Carlos Beltran will tweet quite a bit on the road. Molina. Molina. Victor Marte from time to time. Victor and Yachty often tweet along with Beltron in two languages. Manus asking for the count. Two balls and one strike. I think everybody in the ballpark thought that was a strike. Call the ball. It's Miley and Kelly tomorrow. The 2 1 pitch. We talked about Prado being a very good situational hitter, but he popped up to the infield in a similar situation two innings ago. And that's what the Cardinals are hoping for here or a ground ball at one of those drawn in infielders. The 2 2, and he got him a strikeout for Manus. Diamondbacks uh, turned the tables on the uh, Cardinals tonight with two out base hits and RBIs multiple times tonight. And Manus will try to shut him down and send us to the seventh inning stretch. Well placed fastball. I think Prado was looking for something off speed. You can tell when, it, when a guy is able to sneak a fastball by a big league hitter and he just seems late like that, that he may be looking. For something different. Here's a ground ball. Carpenter, tough play. Not an easy hop to handle. Manus, another scoreless inning. Time to stretch. 6 5.
from head and shoulders. Let's take a look at some of the strikeouts tonight for Michael Walker. Struck out the side in the first. Had a great start. That fastball up in the eyes of Para and really had good velocity in the early going. And there's a changeup where he gets Montero for that third strike. Strikeout in the first inning. But again, too many mistakes for Waka today. A learning experience for him. And, you know, both he and Skaggs out of this game right now, Dan. But, you know, I think it's just a good reminder for us that. These kids may be very talented, but think about a kid that you may know. Maybe it's a nephew, a neighbor, a friend, son, brother, who's 21 years of age. Mm -hmm. And try to imagine them dealing with the pressure, your 21-year-old friend, dealing with the pressure of what it means to be in the big leagues on center stage. And, you know, it's a lot for these kids to handle. They become men quickly, of course, but... It's not easy to perform with all that's put on these young guys. You wonder about the pressure that Cosma felt being a top pick out of high school. How much pressure he put on himself internally because of the pick is he fouls it back in. You know his numbers do they jump out at you? No he's hitting 251 one home run 21 RBIs. That's good where he hits in the order one air at shortstop. But he has become a more complete player at this level. He's grown right before us. No question. Cosma hits a chopper to short. Subway in game box score. The Cardinals with seven hits tonight. They've been out to hit 11 7. It's a subway in game box score. The two home runs, two run shot by Craig, also a solo home run, Shane Robinson, and here is Ty Wigginton. So he focused on the multiple hit games for Cardinals, and we have seven guys with just one. One 0 pitch to Wigginton. Mike Matheny confirming to the media today that he was fined indeed by Major League Baseball. Yachty has appealed his suspension. One of the Cardinals would say, well, Yachty catches tomorrow. Cruz will catch Miller, which he did on Saturday anyway. And then Yachty's done with it. Look forward to being at Cincinnati and that not hanging over the Cardinals heads. Mike was hesitant to talk about the details of his fines. He wanted to kind of get that conversation over in a hurry. There was a time in the past, Dan, when a player was fined for things on the field, and let's say it was for throwing at somebody or a fight on the field or something like that. It was often the case where that fine was mysteriously taken care of, sometimes by teammates. I think Major League Baseball is working hard not to do that. They want the player to actually be the one paying the fine, but there were times where that was not the case. I can promise you that. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Pitching change coming up when we come back.
Cole to the pin, and we'll see Matt Reynolds come in this game. We saw him earlier this season. He has good numbers, but he's been in 27 games himself. Very solid earned run average, 24 innings. Does have an 0 2 record. The Cardinals would like to push that number a little bit higher. And his chore to get out the left handed batting, Matt Carpenter. And Arizona will also try to get Carlos Beltran to hit from the right side. Dan, one of the things I've noticed this year for Beltran is his average quite a bit higher from the left side. Watch oh. out. That hits his hand. He's hopping down to first base, and Cardinals could ill afford to lose him. One of the most valuable players the Cardinals have had during this great run to start the season. Somewhere near the knuckles on his right hand and says he's okay. And Mike Matheny wants to hear it directly from him. He's actually squaring around to bunt and then can't get out of the way. Ball catches the right hand. The throwing hand, of course. Uh, Carpenter is not wearing batting gloves. Not that that would help all that much. Sometimes you see that. Where a guy spins out of the way, hits the knob of the bat. Right. Let's just hope he's all right. Runners at first and second. Tying run again in scoring position. And Beltron takes a ball outside. One out, home half of the seventh. Dan, I mentioned the numbers of Carlos Beltron. He was hitting 331 from the left side, 240 from the right side. Matt Holiday waiting on deck. Right hander getting loose in the pen for Arizona. Beltron hits it out of play. Single back in the sixth. 476 his average with runners in scoring position. The 1-1. One, one. The way this team has played, Rick, you just get the feeling even when they were down in this ball game. One point it was four to one that they're just never out of it. Confidence is sky high. Confidence is really bred from real life experience that gives you confidence. Here's a ground ball. It's a base hit. Will they wave them in? Let's test them. How about a play at the plate? Here it comes. Save as the ball scoots loose. Wigginton sliding in. Beltron delivering. We're tied up at six. The catcher Montero trying to deep Wigginton. You can see that Rick almost as if he wasn't in a position to catch it knowing full well it was coming his way. Kubo's almost a deep shortstop when he lets this ball go. Wigginton we've seen him have a mad dash to the plate before he gets there just in time to beat the throw. Montero tried to scoop it and tag Carlos Beltran with RBI number 38. And Wigginton scoring the tying run. Kirk Gibson will make a double switch. Michael Waka should have had a win in his first start. Could have had a loss here tonight. But he'll stay 0 and 0. So double switch coming up. Game on the line. And big Matt Holiday due up when we come back.
Twitter back in the third. <laughs> and really have had some nice tweets to you, Rick. Yes, they have. At Ricky H49, at Danny Mac TV. Cardinals and Fox Sports Midwest would like us to engage with you. So that's what we're doing tonight. As do the Cardinals. It's a growing segment of fans, and we are enjoying connecting both there and with our television audience. And it's a one of those games, Dan, that just has a Cardinal feel to it. We've gotten back in it, running the fifth, running the sixth, running the seventh to tie it. And they are in the heart of their order right now. Matt Holliday swinging the bat well, a double, hard hit double in the fourth inning. He just missed taking one deep to center his last at bat. The go ahead run is at second base, and Matt Carpenter was hit by a pitch. Beltron tied the game up with a single. He stands at first. Holiday seemed a little bit more locked in tonight, hasn't he? You mentioned that no long question. fly ball and also a double to left center and a run scored. Watch Inside it. to Holiday. Cody Ross is taking over in left field. One oh pitch to a holiday. Now, I know you said that Kirk Gibson has calmed down a little bit. Not quite as fiery maybe as he was as a player but I wonder how fired up he's going to be. When he's asked about the blown call down at third. Well, I think it's an indication of how he's not. Out of control the fact that he was able to go out there and have a conversation about what has turned out to be a big play in this game. That did not go his way. One one is indecisive swing by Holiday. Rarely see that one and two. The average speed off the bat of the baseball when it's put in play in Major League Baseball 77. This is what Holiday has done. The average speed of his hits tonight off his bat over 100 what? miles an hour, and this goes to show how vulnerable pitchers are. Batter standing there and he is braced for a pitch coming at him. And if it's 100 miles an hour, you know he has very little time to get out of the way. But what about a pitcher who's finishing a delivery and really not expecting the ball to get hit back to him and you have to somehow react to something the same speed? Here's a 2 2. Talk quite a bit about sabermetrics tonight, Dan. But one of those stats for sabermetrics is Babbitt, which is batting average of balls in play. In my mind, that ends up being an indication not of luck, as some interpret it, but it's a measure of just how hard a guy hits the ball. Balls are going to drop more when you're hitting at 100 miles an hour. 2 2 pitch, and Holiday fouls it back. One in the one runner at the First base, another at second. Tie ball game, 6-6, six, six, with one out, two and two the count. Reaching for it and a fly ball into right. Para, who has a very good arm in a position to throw. Boy, that's how it's done right there. Got Perfect. himself in position and a strike back into the infield. Carpenter does the right thing and not testing the arm, and he also does the right thing of scampering back to the bag. Para does it perfectly, hits the cutoff man, and Gregorius also. Very alertly comes to cut that by cut that ball off and try to make the tag play at the same time. 
It's fun. It's fun for me, Dan, to watch a good outfield arm. I, I agree. I love it. You don't see it very often anymore, do you? I used to, during infield practice 20 years ago, stay out on the bench and watch the other team take infield because I liked watching guys throw. You learn something, number one, not that it really mattered that I would know it, but to me, there's just something about the art of an outfielder using his arm as a weapon that I think is an exciting part of this game. And a critical part of the game right now, two outs. A base hit the other way for Alan Craig. You've got Para throwing home. That could be an exciting, exciting moment. Time is called 2 0 on Craig. This is his spot. Head in the count, two outs, and a runner in scoring position. Dan, you mentioned all the things he did right. He got behind the ball, so his momentum was going towards the bag. He also kept his hands high, he had his hand near his glove. So the transition was quick. He didn't bring the ball down to his waist. He got rid of it about shoulder high. He just moved the glove to his hand, to his throwing side, and got rid of it quickly. And to me, that transition is as important as, as anything else. This is Craig's spot right here. Will he deliver again? The 2-0 pitch, here it comes. Up and in. Craig tonight, a two-run homer back in the fourth. Turn them loose on 3 0. I know that's what Ed and Ricky Hickard are thinking right now and watching. Ed and Ricky are big Cardinal fans. Watching tonight on Fox Sports Midwest. 3 and 1. Craig with a fly ball into right, and this should do it. The Cardinals tie it up. Carlos Beltran driving in Ty Wigington. 6-6 six, six as we head to the eighth. Let's go to our studio of Bomberito Sports Update. All right, so big win there. Cardinals a chance to gain ground. If they can take a lead and hold on, Trevor Rosenthal is into the ball game, and our Chevy calls to the pin. Feast or famine? If you're a reliever, he had a hard time getting in a ball game, but the Cardinals used him here last night. Pitched a solid inning, gave up a hit, and had a strikeout. Finds himself back out there again in a tie game in the eighth inning. 
I would say he's the guy you want out there in a tie game in the eighth inning. Outfield arms maybe none better than that display of Ricky and Keel in Colorado. Oh Seeing boy. those Rockies highlights makes me think of that. That was sensational. Jim Edmonds was fun to watch throw. And a roommate that was pretty good at it too, Andy Van Slyke. Mm -hmm. Especially with his years with Pittsburgh. There's Willie Bloomquist. Ooh, good play down at first by Alec Craig. What a way to start this eighth inning. Just how good has Trevor Rosenthal been? He hasn't allowed an earned run in 15 straight appearances. 14 in the third innings, no earned runs. Opponents hitting 176. And you love to see those strikeouts. 23 in that time and only three walks issued. Swing and miss percentage very high for Trevor Rosenthal with his, his explosive fastball. He also has a good breaking ball, too. And the key is for him finding the right time and place to use it. Throwing 97. It's hard to want to throw anything else. Liner that is foul. He also has a good changeup, which is why in spring training, the thought was out there that Cardinals might. Put him in the rotation. He might be the fifth starter to replace Kyle Loesch. So he competed with Joe Kelly and a guy named Shelby Miller. Joe Kelly went to the bullpen where he has the capacity to kind of go back and forth, and we'll see him start tomorrow. Shelby Miller, we know how good he's been. Bottom dropped out of that pitch and held on to the changeup. Imagine that, Rick, a change up at 89 miles an hour. What did you top out at? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> and the next hitter is coming up. No, I'll answer your question, but the change up more fun to watch there and, and to check that it was, in fact, at 89. I, <laughs> my fastball was uh, with a good stiff breeze behind me. It was about 85, maybe 86 on a good day. And yeah, the change up would have been about 77 or 78. Rosenthal remind you of anybody you saw back then not that long ago I have to think about that he's got certainly you know there weren't that many guys throwing 97 I mean now I will That's say the amazing thing about today's baseball they're stronger I mean these guys there's a ton of guys like this not necessarily triple digits but they're throwing mid to high 90s weights have changed this game fitness has changed this game competition is certainly there for guys to be bigger and stronger now, it, the older players would say that, and there's some truth to the fact that, that some of the guns that, and gun readings that you would have gotten 20 years ago were a different kind of gun. Radar gun versus the Jugs gun, and one was about three or four miles an hour different. So the guys throwing 95 back then probably were throwing 98, 99. And Todd Worrell comes to mind as a guy that threw hard out of the Cardinals bullpen. Very few guys really bringing it at 95 plus Nolan Ryan would throw 95 96 and he was considered elite as far as velocity was concerned and I must say it was fun to watch Nolan Ryan pitch every single time he came out because you were expecting a potential Perfect game every time. On the outside corner at 99 from Trevor Rosenthal. Yachty will lead it off. Then Freeze and John Jay. The smoke out of the hand of Trevor Rosenthal.
The official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. 6-6 game as we move to the home half of the eighth inning. The Cardinals have scratched and clawed their way back in this game, and Yadier Molina will lead things off. Molina frees, and then we'll see John Jay. St. Louis out hit 11-8. And the first pitch to Molina is taken down and in from Hernandez. Yadi is one for three, picked up an RBI, his 30th. And a check swing on that slider, and he went. Strike two on Molina. Cards and Diamondbacks tied up at 6 6. Social media night. Make sure you're following Fox Sports Midwest and your St. Louis Cardinals for all the ticket deals and various specials that they have. Here's a 1 2, and Yachty strikes out on a 93 mile an hour fastball. As we reset, we're at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Rick Horton is alongside. His Twitter handle is at RickyH49. I'm Dan McLaughlin at Danny Mac TV. So, not only, Rick, are we trying to add followers for your ego, but we're also <laughs> trying to interact with fans. All stuff. It really well, is. Well, I'm figuring there's 7 billion people on the planet, thereabouts. I would think half of them ought to be following you. Yeah. I really am serious about this Twitter thing. It's a lofty goal. Mm -hmm. So Molina strikes out. Freeze extended his hitting streak. Career best now. 13, and it began really his turnaround after his grand slam back on May 17th. That pitch at 95. Freeze. Robbed in center field by A.J. Pollock. Ball that he hit to the wall. He's also grounded out to short. Extended his hitting streak with an infield hit back in the sixth. The 0-2 bouncer right side. And he'll reach. The go-ahead run is on. Off the glove of Willie Bloomquist near the lip of the dirt and the grass. I'm not sure if it took a bad hit, a bad hop on that. And if they'll give him a base hit. We'll have to see how they rule that. Certainly not an easy play for Bloomquist going to his left. I think I'd call it an error, but we'll see how it's ruled. And officially a base hit for David Freeze. I won't argue with that. That's his second hit. So now he and Carlos Beltran with multiple hit games. One out, runner at first, and now it's John Jay. He sat with the lefty starting. Shane Robinson made the start. Homer played center field. Cardinals pinch hit in that spot with Matt Adams, who struck out. That was back in the sixth. And now it's John Jay, first plate appearance tonight. And he's 0 for 3 against this right-hander. So a two hit night for Freeze. 1 0 pitch to Jay. Outfield is deep, and now time is cold late. Pops it up. Two away. Deep 
Cosmo looking for his first hit of the night. In fact, Dan, he's 0 for 15. Struck out in the third inning, bounced out in the fifth and the seventh. Average at 250. See if he can extend the inning. Rosenthal's spot is next. This is well hit. Out to center. Just got under it. And flies out in front of the track. Hernandez a scoreless play, uh, frame. And it's 6 6. Coming up next, Jim Hayes is driving that bus tonight. So, Mr. Hayes hosting, and Al Raboski will be his analyst. Rosenthal, his second inning of work. And he'll have the top of the lineup. Para, Gregorius, and Goldschmidt. And you'd like to have Goldschmidt hit with nobody on base. He is really swinging the bat well. A couple of doubles in this game. Really their hottest hitter. It's out of play. 94 from Rosenthal. Underway here in the ninth inning. 6-6 six, six game. Dan, when this game is played right, the table setters do their job. The RBIs guys come in and hit the gappers, and that's how you win. That's how you score. And when the pitchers do their job right, they get the leadoff batter out, and then they finish off inning. Here's a ground ball right side. Carpenter, one away. Rosenthal, one way or another, his final inning of work. Due up first for the Cardinals in their lineup. And the Cardinals have Carpenter and Beltron interested to see how Carpenter will swing the bat after being hit by pitch on his hand, his throwing hand last time up. Dan, we have a lot of friends with us here in the booth today. We got uh, TJ Junta, Luke Junta, and Justin Peacock. They are with us tonight and enjoying Cardinals baseball. And wouldn't you know it, Luke? Slap me right across the back of my head. He said you got way too excited Dan on that Pete Cosma flyout. You're right. <laughs> and I know he's only what 11 years old 10 years old. Nine years old. Quite a punch. <laughs> and that's okay. I can turn to my. Twitter handle and receive. All the love I need. One ball and two strikes. On the Diamondback shortstop. <laughs> and some things you don't need. Well, I don't need to go there. All in fun. You bet it is. Back to Rosenthal. He jammed it.
just enough, uh, enough time for uh, Trevor to make that play. That wasn't quite the 101 miles an hour off the bat of Holiday, no. so jammed him enough. Almost a change up back to Rosenthal. He had to kind of have the right reaction skills as he delivers his pitch hard and it comes back soft and then he has to put his glove in the right spot. Fields his position well. And the way Gregorius runs, you don't want the ball loose in the middle of the infield. No. Already with two infield hits in the series. So two outs and here is Paul Goldschmidt. This is power against power. A little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. Good old fashioned hard ball right here. Kind of fun, isn't it? It is. 99. Michael Walker off the hook tonight after the bullpen couldn't bail him out last game, which he deserved the win. Three and one. Chase the ball. Off speed pitch. Seventeen pitches over ninety five miles an hour for Trevor Rosenthal. Jammed him again. Popped up. Shallow right. This is all Carpenter. He's got it. Great work by Rosenthal again out of the pen. Can the Cardinals win it when we come back? Arizona been out hit uh, or has out hit St. Louis 11 9 and it's 6 6 game late change now as the Diamondbacks will make a pitching change right when we came back. So we'll take a, another time out.
time that we walked off against Arizona 2011. Tony Cruz. Magical season of 2011. Tony Cruz, the game winner. Where's the shredder? There he is. Nick Punto, my goodness. I mean, he was like licking his chops, wasn't he? First one to hop over the rail. Colby Rasmus would score. Here's Daniel Descalso against the lefty. And we're underway here in the bottom of the night. The shredder, part of that 2011 team. Chevy called to the pen. Tony Sip. 23 games. High ERA. 1 0 pitch to Daniel Descalso. He's been swinging a hot bat. One of the heroes in that Kansas City series, the brief two gamer in this homestand. Chase the ball. Scalso with a fly ball into right. There's another one of those very high fly balls, and you see it come off the bat of a major leaguer, Rick. You realize they don't miss it by much, do they? Yeah, you'd have to say a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, maybe difference between that being a fly out to right and a home run into the seats. Matt Holiday had one earlier, and it shows the raw power of guys at this level. Pitcher is very aware of that, and. I'm sure Mr. Sip a little agitated at the thought of being that close to losing this ball game. Carpenter way out in front on that pitch. Hit by a pitch back in the seventh. And that was his right hand that was hit. The bottom hand on his bat. Throwing hand out in the field. You'd have to think that has swollen up some. 0 1 pitch. And that's two odd swings by Carpenter. No he question. does not look right. Maybe he's fooled by that pitch, but even when he's fooled, if he wasn't hit by that pitch earlier, you don't normally see him swinging like that. Going to try to make an adjustment here, and I think he's just going to keep his hands back as long as he can, just try to hit the ball the other way. It just seems like that's the only swing he's got left right now. The 0 2. Talk about injuries to baseball players, Dan, and people will kind of question the toughness, and it's not really a matter of toughness. Why you can't swing? You just physically are trying to do a fine motor skill job that requires you to have. And he's hit again. Oh. Where did it get him this time? Sounded a little fleshier that time. And he doesn't appear to be worried about it quite as much. Looks like the right forearm, a little bit of a glancing blow, still doesn't feel good, I can promise you. But gets the elbow out of the way, thankfully, glances off that right forearm, and I hope there's a lot of ice at the Carpenter House tonight. Brady McDowell on Twitter is calling a Beltron walk-off. Good call. Last walk off against Arizona. All the way back in 2008.
Social media night. Second time that we've seen that in this series where Bob makes a catch, goes into his glove, and drops the baseball. Second time a gold glover has done this. Pair of flyouts, a double, and a sack for Matt Holiday. RBI was back in the first. That bounces in the dirt. Carpenter reads it well. He's in scoring position. The little things that this guy does. Yes, he did read it well. Taught by the Cardinals, when you see a ball in the dirt, be ready, take off. That's exactly what he did. Nine times out of ten, the catcher's not going to be able to get to it quickly enough. Montero sacrifices his right arm to block that ball. But there's the good jump of Matt Carpenter. around holiday interesting move here and first base open they will deal with Alan Craig who will tell you his numbers will show you the track record that he has runners in scoring position and maybe they're seeing what we were seeing Rick Horton is the fact that holiday seems to be seeing the ball a little yeah. bit better tonight driving the baseball so Alan Craig chance to win it and you would figure that Kurt Gibson then goes to his bullpen and will bring in a righty. He's running out of bodies. He sure is. We'll tell you the change when we come back. The right hander, Will Harris, who comes into the game. Pitched an inning here last night, gave up a hit. It was unscored upon. Decent ERA. Comes in with the game on the line, the crowd on its feet. We've had good crowds at this homestand, Dan. I mean, Amazing. active crowds. And why wouldn't they be excited? The Cardinals 
trying to go 20 games over 500 here tonight. Pitch around Holiday to pitch to Craig. The first pitch taken for a ball. Craig lined out first time up, two run homer in the fourth. He is struck out and also flied out to right. Pitch. Make it 2 0. Oh. You've got Yachty on deck. Interesting that Kirk Gibson picks his poison and he picks Alan Craig instead of Matt Holiday. Harris faced Holiday here last night and got him to hit into a double play. But maybe he wants a guy that has not seen Harris yet. There's the only run that matters. A 2 0 oh pitch. Ooh, gets the call and it's two and one. Mejica throwing in the Cardinal pin. At home tie game you go to extra innings your closer more times than not will come in. Two and two. you rate these outfield arms Rick Horton well the arm you got to be worried about is in right field Pollock has shown that he throws well at center but there's the strong arm that's para in right Ross I would say average arm in left really their job is to position themselves so they can throw somebody out they've got to know who the runner is but you can't play but so shallow with Alan Craig at the plate the 2-2 two -two. Doesn't chase. Now that becomes a moot point at three and two. So they're not throwing anybody out now. They might as well back up and just hope to cover the gaps. It's the major leagues. These guys, for the most part, great control with just about any pitch they can throw. You've got Craig here on three and two. Runners go with two outs. So what pitch do you want to throw to Craig here? Or do you just hope he chases and then deal with? Molina if he does it well I don't want to deal with Molina or Craig frankly if I'm Will Harris but I think you've got two strikes on Alan Craig you got to try to finish it off here because it's not going to get any better with Yadier Molina so you throw your best pitch and more importantly your best pitch that day what worked in the bullpen what do I feel good because the game's on the line now. Two pitch. Craig bounces it foul. That is the one that matters. Carpenter. Standing at second. Craig a chance to win it. 3 2 pitch. Craig bounces it to the pitcher. Steps, throws, extra innings upcoming here at Bush Stadium. Ah, don't slam that helmet. Don't do it. We know <laughs> we know what happens next. Good advice.
jerky all season long. Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side. If there's been anything you want to nitpick at the Cardinals this year, there's not a lot. Maybe it's extra innings where they're 0 and 3. That's about it. So extra innings and rundowns. There you go. You want to have a negative conversation about the Cardinals, you kind of have to deteriorate into rundown conversation. And this team has done so many things well. Extra innings 0 and 3. Our Chevy called the bullpen, Edward Mojica. He also pitched an inning in yesterday's game after plenty of rest, and he is replacing Trevor Rosenthal. We're going to call him our Budweiser player of the game. We know there's a lot to be played, but why not? Rosenthal, two solid innings, no walks, two strikeouts, and he has just been dynamite in that Cardinal bullpen. Miguel Montero. Pitch that's taken a little low. Diamondbacks actually have played in eight extra inning games and they have gone six and two. That pitch is a strike. One and one. One ball and two strikes. Montero over four. And that's hit sharply into right field on a pitch that was up. So Montero picks up the base hit and we're underway here in the 10th inning. Has had an awful lot of one, two, three innings. This pitch down and in. Montero with his first hit of the night. Been struggling offensively. Got some work to do now for the Cardinal closer. Martin Prado. Third baseman freeze. Stepping in. But four or five steps down at 30s, even with the bag, as Craig holds it first. And this is a double play ball. Out at second. Out at first. Double play. <laughs> Cardinals turn their 66th double play of the season. Most in the National League. Very good timing for that one. And I'm so glad I said that Martin Prado was a very good situational hitter because he hasn't been the last three times at the plate. And you know how we influence what goes on on the field. You bet we do. Here's Eric Hinsky. This guy is now making a, a long career out of being a very good pinch hitter. Comes off the bench. He's figured out the art of being a pinch hitter and one of the best right now in the game. Slices that to left, and the catch is made. The Cardinals have Molina. Freeze and Jay. We're tied. 6-6. Six, six. Play that suspenseful music. Here comes Jack Bauer.
Deschamps he called to the pin and as this game goes on. A lot of moves have been made clearly on both sides but. Numbers are dwindling right now for Kirk Gibson. Well they have Colmaner in their bullpen they also have Heath Bell. And that's it. Cardinals we should add Dan with. Joe Kelly starting game three. Have lost one of their potential reliever guys too for today. But the two innings that Mike Matheny got out of Trevor Rosenthal very important. Cardinals still have Choate, Butler, Marte. So they're a little less thin than the D-backs are right now. Colminter, 27-year-old right-hander, in his third year with the Diamondbacks. Starter when he first came up to the big leagues, won 10 games for Arizona as a rookie. One ball, one strike on Yachty. Molina back to the big right hander for the first out. Breaks his bat, base hit out to left. Not that long ago, we were talking about a Cardinal not having a multiple hit night. David Freeze just picked up his third. That average just keeps rising for David Freeze. Didn't exactly square this one up, but gets the job done. David maybe out front just a little bit too much. Hits off the end of the bat. The bat dies a hero. Freeze has his third hit. Here's John Jay. Outfield fairly deep for Jay. Straight away. Second plate appearance. Came into the ball game late. Popped out to the second baseman. One away, frees the runner at first. One ball, one strike on Jay. And that's taken low. Two balls and one strike. Hard to look last night how some of the pitchers were fiddling around with the landing area. Yeah. yeah. This right hander's done that a handful of times in his short appearance. Noticing his interesting delivery too, Dan. I mean, you could hardly be more over the top than he is. Almost like a pitch. Almost like a pitching machine. He's got that kind of iron mic pitching machine motion where you can see there being a lot of strain on your shoulder. I would imagine his off speed pitches would be very deceptive from that angle. Jay like, pops it up. Like shallow that. left. Yep. Change up. Some good news tonight. For the Cardinals, Cincinnati loses. 
Pittsburgh loses five to four. There's the high delivery. Got to be uphill to throw downhill to get the ball down. He took a little off of that and had John Jay out front. Here's Pete Cosma. Check swing, ground ball to first. And we head to the 11th. Tied at 6-6. Six, six. Right now, a concern for Mike Matheny is that you have Joe Kelly going tomorrow. You're not sure what you're going to get from Joe, how long he could go into a game. And you had a couple of innings tonight from Rosenthal. Manus did not go uh, unscathed as far as throwing some innings tonight. Waka wasn't deep into the game, so be nice to end this with a win as quickly as possible. We have five or six other guys throwing 98 down to the minor league, don't we? Bring him up. I know you're a fan of uh, Segrist. There's a leadoff base hit for Bloomquist, cut off by Jay. You mentioned yesterday that he was the player of the month for the month of May. Left-handed reliever, Cal Eldred. Told me quite a bit about him. He really loves the way he throws and thinks he's got a big upside. He's got a nasty breaking pitch, throws hard enough. And Colton Wong, the second baseman in Triple A Memphis, was the player of the month in May. So congratulations to both of those guys. Here's AJ Pollock. The three run a homer off of Waka earlier tonight. That was in the fourth. He struck out twice since that time. Sacrificing here. It is rolling and it will roll foul. Heads up play again by Yachty. Took a chance and it paid off. Most chances that he takes do pay off. High baseball acumen. Just has a sense that that ball is starting to spin and go foul. And he waits and waits and waits. And he made the right choice. Because if that ball stays fair, obviously, men at first and second, you've got a lot of problems.
Cardinals had a situation. Mahika was working a little bit too much. Same with Rosenthal. Had to sit out that disappointing night. Waka in line for the victory and then became a situation where you needed to get those two some work. The ebbs and flows of Major League Baseball season. Showing Bunn again, and that's strike two. That could be a costly mistake for Kurt Gibson's team. Not getting the bunt down, and something we talked about at the time, Dan, but worth going back to. They had Carlos Beltran been called out at third base. We'd be right in the middle of the postgame show right now. Talking about a Cardinals loss. One two reaching for it. All things equal of course. You can't predict how things would have followed after that but the Cardinals got a break Beltron. Stole third base in the sixth inning was called. Safe was clearly out on the replays. And Yadier Molina with two outs drove him in. That was the Cardinals fifth run got him close. They added one in the seventh. And that's where we are. Strikeout for Mojica. His first since entering the ball game. The off-speed pitch for Mojica. We've seen a lot of different grips and varieties of changeups today, but we've seen guys throw good ones. Michael Waka has a good changeup. Seth Manus saw Rosenthal feature the changeup and. The off speed pitch for Mujica is thrown a little bit more like a fork ball. And it has a little more downward movement, but it's been his out pitch for sure. He throws hard enough too to keep you honest. Right, exactly. You know, Ryan Franklin has joined in our social media night. Really wanted to come up to the booth. Security stopped him. <laughs> Looking at that beard, they realized we better keep this guy out. <laughs> but when I watch Mahika, I think a little bit of Ryan Franklin. Very good control. Agreed. Efficient innings. Off-speed pitches at any time in the count. Franklin, by the way, working in the Cardinals front office, special assistant to the GM, and he'll be part of the draft night coming up for the Cardinals, representing St. Louis. As that's become a, a bigger event for Major League Baseball as far as the scope of it, trying to make it bigger than uh, it has been in the past. Would it, you know, it used to be just somebody on the phone saying, Royals have just picked Bo Jackson. I mean, literally, that was it. Ooh, they almost picked him off. And, uh, and there's a time, Dan, where, where you wouldn't even see that the, everybody published for weeks. They would, they, there was a desire in baseball's part not to publish the draft picks because they didn't want them talking. Because they didn't want the two guys get together. How much are you asking for? How much are you? And they didn't want the agents conferring. So there was really a kind of a lack of information about the major league draft for years. But I think baseball has seen now how you can get a couple of 21 year old kids to the big leagues pretty soon and make a difference. Skaggs, Waka, Shelby Miller. Not that long ago, those guys were being drafted in the June draft. And the more that happens, Dan, I think it's going to change free agency a bit. I think teams are going to start testing a little bit more. The thought that, well, my guy's a good player, costs a lot of money. I'm going to get a first round draft choice. I'll be better off. I think we're going to see more and more teams doing that. Youth of the game with Machado. Washington's young stars that they have. Trout, the Angels. The 
If you're looking at a lot of the all-star votes, they're going to younger players, and that's right now the trend in baseball where you saw for a while, maybe because steroids was in the game and you had those mid-30 players that were playing like mid-20 players, but the crackdown with that has allowed Major League Baseball to see a younger generation of great players come through. It's been fun to watch. Cardinals are seeing that too. 2 2 pitch to Cody Ross. Popped up right side. Carpenter calling for it near the line and makes the play. Extra innings presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky feed your wild side. You said steroids were in the game of baseball, and of course, PEDs are different than steroids, but the story that is kind of Circulating throughout Major League Baseball today about there being a little more than just smoke to what happened down in Florida and some players being potentially implicated there. I think that has a chance to be the story of 2013. Very well could be. The fallout from that, we shall see. You know, you hope against that being <laughs> the case and that being the story. You hope it being, you hope that it's just talk and has no legs to it, but. I think baseball has learned over time that what you really need to do is get to the truth, deal with that, and then move on. Baseball is strong enough to handle that. But if you try to cover it up and it lingers, then it just gets worse and worse and worse. 0 1 pitch to par at top of the lineup. Hit out of play. The Cardinals, by the way, will have Bohica's spot, then Carpenter and Beltron. Swing and a miss. Mejica strikes him out. Can the Cardinals win it in the bottom of the 11th? We'll find out after this timeout. Right has grabbed a bat. See him pinch hit, we would assume. Wainwright will pinch hit to lead off the inning. What's left on the bench, Tony Cruz. Bullpen six to the third of scoreless baseball for the Cardinals. After the six earned runs, four and two thirds from Michael Walker. Second inning of work. For Josh Coleminter. Heath Bell is still out there for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. 
Wainwright, another great outing on Saturday, game two of the doubleheader. Those are his career numbers. Swing the bat, the 1 0 pitch. And he's swinging the bat better this year, Dan, than he did a year ago. After coming off the Tommy John, he seemed a little more tentative with the bat, but his average this year at 172, career 200 hitter. Tony La Russa used him in this kind of situation a lot. I love seeing him up there in an extra inning game. He's going to give you a serious at bat. Let's put it that way. See, now that he's not pitching, he'll argue the strike zone. Oh, yeah. One and two, the count on Adam Wainwright. Good cut. And with all the fun that Wainwright has pregame and all the handshakes and the things that he does, when he's on the field, he's business. I mean, the game's on the line right now, and he knows it. Odd for a pitcher to be hitting here, but. He's battling. Two and two. You bring up a very valid point. We're talking about not just a, a good pitcher, but a great athlete that can handle the bat at this level. Didn't swing the bat for a full year. Big difference. Trying to get that timing back. Not just timing, you're still always protecting your elbow when you're swinging the bat. Two pitch to Wayno. <laughs> Top of the lineup here is Carpenter. Remember in the previous at bat, swung through two pitches. And in doing that, did not look comfortable at all. He's been hit twice by pitches. And the first time it was on his right hand. I think you would agree, Rick. It was more than being fooled by a pitch. He just didn't right. seem comfortable no, at that he did time. Not. Let's hope that's changed. Here's a 1 0 pitch. That swing a little tentative for Matt Carpenter, and it's not, again, anything that you wouldn't expect to be a normal problem for somebody that's been hit twice in a couple of vulnerable areas. Knuckles, his right hand, and the forearm. That'll find the seats out of play for strike two, one and two on Matt Carpenter. Almost like his left hand is taking over a little bit more in his swing. Doesn't have the balance between the two hands that you'd normally have with your approach. He's giving it his best shot. No complaining. Carpenter laces one to left field. Wedding run is on. We shouldn't count him out, should we? Absolutely not. He tripled for the Cardinals. Came around to score all the way back in that first inning. Another multi hit game for Matt Carpenter. Talked about him leading the Cardinals in that department. He gets a pitch up and away. Really, maybe the best pitch for him to handle right now. Just take it the other way, as we mentioned. And he is the potential winning run with Beltron at the plate. Oh, swing and a miss.
Strike two. Oh, two to Carlos. Outfield is deep, and here's a one two. Bounces away, and Carpenter, is he thinking going to third? No, he'll stop. Back to the bag at second and in safely. Montero had to scamper to get that ball, and he knew that Carpenter might be thinking about a little more than just to head to the second base. Actually takes a bit of a header, rounding second. Montero, the snap throw. Wise choice. Now in scoring position. The 2-2 two -two to Carlos Beltran. Remember last time Holiday, who was on deck, they intentionally walked him to pitch to Craig in a move that did pay off. Right now, dealing with Carlos Beltran, three and two, first base open with one out. When you have to pick between pitching to Beltran, Holiday, Craig, and Molina, it's not that simple. Three two pitch. Carlos pops it up. I was thinking, Rick, they may pitch around Beltron once Carpenter got in scoring position. Reason why double Holiday plays. is grounded into 13 double plays. Exactly. And you got the lefty righty thing, but they went right at Carlos Beltron. Now, what are they going to do with Matt Holiday? Same situation, first base open again. Two innings ago. With Carpenter at second, they chose to intentionally walk Holiday to face Alan Craig. Not this time. Two outs, runner at second base. First pitch to Holiday. Ooh, what a rip for strike one. Keith Butler. Warming up in the pen. Strike two. Carpenter on base, by the way, for the fourth time tonight. He stands at second base. Represents the winning run. The 0 2 pitch to Holiday. Here's a 1 2. Holiday is swinging a miss.
season long. Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side. We're in game two of this four game set. Arizona and St. Louis tied up at six as we jump ahead to this 12th inning. Chevy called to the bullpen is Keith Butler. We like what we've seen from him so far. Just a couple of games. Two innings pitched. We've seen a moving fastball, a running fastball, low three-quarter delivery, and a changeup from Butler. May have heard some oohs and ahs as we went to break. Reason why the raw strength of one Matt Holiday. Remember Bo Jackson, second time I've mentioned him tonight, but Bo Jackson would take it over his knee, the bat, yep. and watch that, and it just I, caught I your attention. I tried to do that once just for fun. Mm -hmm. It's painful. You bet it is. And guess what? The bat didn't break. The knee hurt. The knee hurt. Actually, my, both my hands hurt. I mean, it's just not easy to break a bat over your knee. Here's Gregorius. Pitch tailing away. Holiday choosing not to use his knee, but breaking the bat nonetheless. Glad he missed his foot. Here's the 0 2. Slamming the equipment police are in full force on Twitter trying to determine why you can do it sometimes and why you can't do it other times. And frankly, that's a good question. We've seen a few cases of it in this game. Been a story this week for the Cardinals to be sure. Two balls and two strikes. Next by Butler. Off the end of the bat and a fly ball into shallow center. Jay makes the catch. Somehow avoiding Matt Carpenter. Makes a very good play. Late innings, good speed. He was playing fairly deep. Not only important that he catches this ball. Because it's a leadoff batter, but it was a fast leadoff hitter. Who knows where Gregorius would have ended up? Here is Paul Goldschmidt. A pair of doubles tonight. As we play here in the top of the 12. Arizona with 13 base hits. St. Louis with 11. One of the stories of this game, the bullpen of St. Louis. Relief of Michael Waka. That's a good team that clicks together, that wins together. When your starting pitching is not stellar, you have to find other ways to stay in the game. The Cardinals managed to get six runs off of Skaggs and Arizona's bullpen, and the Cardinal bullpen has done their job. So it's a you win as a team, you lose as a team. Some may get more credit than others in a particular moment, but you're going to need everything working to have a first place ball club. Hate to see that after he had Goldschmidt, a couple of strikes on him, and uh, allows the one out walk. Cardinals, at least on paper, in better position bullpen wise right now than Kirk Gibson's club. Not by much, but better position. I mean, you have to take Joe Kelly out of the equation. More players available for Kirk Gibson than pitcher. Kelly will start tomorrow. One out and a runner at first. 
Fastball and a strike to Montero. Picked up a base hit back in the 10. Briefly mentioned the game that Mike Matheny was talking about with Butler where he pitched in spring training. It was the day, Dan, I'm not sure if you did the game, but Jaime Garcia started a game where the wind was blowing out like crazy. Oh, yeah. And it was just a ridiculous game to be played. High scoring game and Butler in that game. Gave up a couple of wind blown home runs. And Matheny went out to talk to him to kind of calm him down. And he looked him in the eyes and he realized this guy doesn't need calming down. He's fine. And he walked back out and he could tell that he had a demeanor about him that was full of confidence, not brashness, but confidence. And he wasn't going to be affected. He understood what just happened and it moved on. And he was really impressed with his gutsiness. 0 2, and he got him on a changeup, 78 miles an hour. And there's two away. The Cardinals have to be thoroughly impressed with what they've seen from just about everybody they have called up. There has not been, you know, one guy you called up and you said, boy, that, that just didn't work out. He didn't belong here. Right. He wasn't ready. You know, he just is nervous. I mean, who's nervous? Frankly, Shelby Miller and Lance Lynn are the main reasons for that. You have two young guys who've established themselves, who are guys that some of these other young players know and have competed with. And I think that success has kind of spilled over because these guys think, you know what, they can do it, so can I. Prado hits it out to deep center. Jay is back with him and makes the catch on the track. We're still tied. We hope you're still with us. Bottom of the 12th rolls in when we come back. John Jay had to come in on one baseball. This one he goes back. 6-6. all day today also draft preparation and looking at some of the players that were in this area and Ryan Franklin is there there's Ryan it's amazing how he's able to not only do all the homework and getting ready for the draft on Thursday night but also tweeting at us on social media at night Great work by Ryan Franklin. And the party continues. Oh, does it? Josh Colmenter. Well, these two teams, no stranger to extra innings against each other this year. That long game we had. There's a long fly ball out to left, one away. That long ball game we had in Arizona. Beginning of the season.
Diamondbacks won that game 10 to 9 in 16 innings. That was on the 3rd of April. Third game of the season for both teams and Lance Lynn, Brandon McCarthy started that game. And plenty of pitchers on both sides. Colmenter entered the game in the 12th and finished up for Arizona. We mentioned former starter. We may see him a while longer if need be. Swing and a miss. Yachty hustling down the line. Montero though with time and makes the play. Colmenter in his third inning of white work. Just a couple of hits. David Freeze has one of them. Matt Carpenter the other. That came in the 11th inning. He got the scoring position. The Cardinals could not drive him in. St. Louis has stranded nine. Arizona eight. Well hit, but pulled foul. Three hits in a row for David Freeze. Two seventy seven. Not that long ago, Dan, just barely above 200. 0 1 pitch taken inside. Cardinals have talked about how he's letting the ball get a little deeper in on him, not jumping, and able to turn on that inside pitch. The 2 1. Watch out. Freeze, base hit into left. Rotting the line. Regardless, probably a base hit for David Freeze, but there it is, a four hit night. Average on the rise. Good look at Prado guarding the line. Opening that large hole for David Freeze. I agree with you, would have been a hit anyway, probably, if he's playing in his normal position, but David's average now in the last 14 games is over 400. And his first career four hit game. John Jay, a couple of very good plays defensively in the top half of this inning. Takes ball one with two outs, winning run at first. Cardinals have left nine on, Arizona eight. Two and zero. Oh. This is where a manager has to be thinking even further ahead than what's going on at the plate right now. John Jay hits a double right here, Dan. Second and third. What will they do? They'll walk Pete Cosma. Then you've got to decide whether or not to go to your last player on the bench and give up on Butler or let him hit. You waste a pitcher. Bring in Tony Cruz or not. Now the decision isn't needed right now, but I can tell you that's on the mind of both Kurt Gibson and Mike Matheny right now. They have to play ahead. They're like chess players. And he walked him. 
So here we go, decision time. You've got Cosme here. Do you walk him? And then put that decision in the hands of Mike Matheny. I think second and third, you surely do it. First and second, I would say he won't. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. Cosma. Oh, for his last 16. And there's Tony Cruz in the on deck circle. What do you think? Just for show? Could be. Two outs, two on. Will they pitch to Cosma? Will Cosma win the game? Pete looks at a strike. Three uh, ground outs and a fly out for Pete Cosma. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Winning run at second base, David Fries. A two out base hit, then the walk. And now Cosmo falls behind, nothing in two. Number 13 coming up. 6-6. Six, six. Jerky all season long. Jack Leaks. Beef jerky feeds your wild side. We go to the 13th inning because the Cardinals tied it in the seventh inning. Wigginton at the plate. 7-7. Seven, seven. Carlos Beltran picking up an RBI. Four hit night for David Freeze, and the Cardinals bullpen has been a story as well. Keith Butler beginning his second inning of work. Cardinals extra inning numbers since 2010 at home, just 10 and 16. And Butler ready for the Diamondbacks. Colmenter batting for himself and lines out to right. You know, Rick, in talking with some of the Arizona folks prior to this series, asking them if a situation like this arose, they were talking about our game coming into this series that we had with Kansas City and that late night affair. You know, who's their long man? Well, this is the guy, Colmenter. They they feel they can get five, maybe even six innings out of him. Now they also have a position player, Josh Wilson, in his career has made three or four appearances. 
if it got to be a, a crazy situation where they ran out of pitchers. And he has hit 91 92 on the gun position player. That's a few innings away, but a nice weapon to have. Yeah. Schumacher the other day pitching for LA was hitting low 90s. 0 1 pitch to Goldschmidt, make it 0 2. Cardinals have Butler's spot due up, then Carpenter and Beltron. So with Pennington left on their bench, you would think that if they did need to use an extra player, which they've not gotten to that point yet, you're Kirk Gibson, you'll go with Pennington first and save Wilson. So Willie Bloomquist at the plate, no balls and two strikes with one out. Really a matter of managing your assets right now, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And managing the assets the way baseball is now, Dan, also includes who do you have in Triple A? And I would think the Cardinals are getting very close. If last inning Tony Cruz would have pinch hit for Butler, I think it's time for Joe Kelly to go get his spikes on and be ready. No doubt. And if he's ready, that means you've got to be ready to find out who you might be able to call Absolutely. upon the pitch tomorrow. Yep. And that means John Mosellock's thinking about that right now and maybe even talking to the friends of Memphis and saying be careful not to put A, B, and C in a ball game tonight. All that going on. If you don't plan ahead in this game, it jumps up and bites you. So two away, A.J. Pollock. Butler in this bullpen has done an incredible job for St. Louis. Cole Mentor is very good for uh, Arizona. Top of the 13th, two down, and the 1 0 pitch. One ball and one strike. I would not think Butler would go more than two innings. We saw Manus at two and a third. Rosenthal went two, Mohica two. And this is Butler's second inning. I would think we'd see Victor Marte next. And again, the good changeup of Butler, and it's a power pitch for him, too. In the air. Center field. Jay is there. It's another chance for St. Louis to win it when we come back.
June 13th in Arizona and St. Louis. So here it is Joe Kelly. Hitting in Butler's spot. You still have Cruz available on your bench. He's your emergency catcher, so to speak. So that solves that problem. You're not going to use Joe Kelly as a pitcher in this game, which means you're now down to Marte, unless you keep him in. Not with Marte warming up. Missed that part. <laughs> Well, I, well, I thought the same way you did. Then I looked up and I saw him just getting up the throw. Bun attempt by Joe Kelly runs well, but not that well. Stayed on his feet too. <laughs> yes, he did. He had some adventures last year. Yes, he did. And was a good sport about it too. Sure was. So one away, and here is Carpenter. Well, that was an interesting move. For Mike Matheny to just basically made the decision. I'm using Joe Kelly tomorrow. He's starting tomorrow yep. period and and that means that that again shrinks his bullpen to Randy Choate and Victor Marte and interesting that Choate is not you pitch her up with a couple of left handers do up for Arizona next inning. they will have Ross. First, who hits from the right side, but then the top of the order, Para and Gregorius. 0 oh, 1 pitch to Carpenter. He is hit again. Third time in this game that Matt Carpenter has been hit by a pitch. Times in one game for Matt Carpenter. The knuckles, the forearm, and now back of the right shoulder. He's gonna have to sleep on his left side tonight. Wonder who's going to be ducking in their lineup. No kidding. As Beltron hits it out of play. At some point. And, and I can't players have to police themselves and and I can't think of a real reason that that they would be throwing at Matt Carpenter. He's not a I mean, I can't think of anything that he's done in this series or did in last hit. series. <laughs> yeah, he's gotten on base. Here's the 0 one pitch to Beltron. By the way. In the 100 plus years of Cardinals baseball, we are told. That's the first time that has ever happened that a player's gotten hit and, uh, hit three times in a game. Man, oh man. If anybody could have done it, it would have been Ron Hunt. One ball, then two strikes. Ron Hunt, for the longest time, set the all time record, held it, hit by pitch, then broken by the man in that dugout, Don Baylor. The difference is Don Baylor got hit. How many hundreds of times and only felt about two or three of them. As big as he is. Strikeout. Beltron not happy with the call. Is it a strike? No, it's not. Carlos normally doesn't complain and he issued a little mild comment to the home plate umpire. Dana DeMuth, who's been out there a long time. Here is Holiday. He could send everybody home with one swing of the bat. Pitch to Holiday. Outfield is deep. Be fitting, by the way, if Matt Carpenter could score the winning run. No question. 
been a painful journey, but Carpenter sure has increased his on-base percentage with his night tonight. He's been on to do five it, right? out of seven times. <laughs> The 2-0 pitch to Holiday. Took something off it. 2-1. and one. There's his numbers in the April 3rd game we talked about. Actually gave up a run. Then the Diamondbacks scored a run, so he went back out, stayed out there through 16. A lot of strikeouts in that game and pitched very, very well out of the pen. Go pitch here, Dan. Three and one. You bet. Here it comes. Oh, what a rip. Had a good feeling about that pitch. Nice tweet here from Justin Hernandez on social media night. Wanting to know about uh, your Twitter handle at RickyH49 at Danny Mac TV. All the players on Twitter as well. Three and two. Runner goes up the middle, base hit. Carpenter steps on the bag at second, on his way to third. Oh, so close now is Matt Carpenter to scoring the winning run. Holiday drives it up the middle. His second hit of the night, third time he's been on. Carpenter, good jump, no problem heading to third. Just 90 feet away. We have seen in this game a couple of wild pitches. Yes, we have. From the Arizona Diamondbacks, 13 hits aside as we play here in the 13th. And you know you don't want to leave on 13 tonight, which is what the Cardinals would do. If Alan Craig doesn't come through. Too many 13s. First pitch taken inside by Craig. One of the things about Carpenter getting to third base, Dan, is the pitcher very mindful of the fact that a wild pitch loses this game. And that tends to make you a little bit less likely to throw that nasty pitch down in the dirt. And sometimes results in you hanging one or getting one in the middle of the plate. Carpenter standing at third. 1 0 pitch to Craig. By the way, the last time that a player was hit three times in a game, it was Austin Kearns, who would get hit a lot. Remember with his time with the Cincinnati Reds? It was with Cleveland against Texas July 5th of 2010. And we mentioned Ron Hunt, Max Linewan, our post-game producer, said that he was hit three times in a game, but he was with the Giants at the time in 1969. Here's a 2-0 pitch to Craig. Launches one out to left, but that'll be caught. Cardinals will strand two. They've stranded 13 tonight. And we head to the 14th inning.
rolls in. We're tied up. 6 6, Arizona and St. Louis. Marte, three games and one walk, one strikeout. Remember when Marte was at his best a year ago, Cardinals felt comfortable in using him against lefties. And when his slider is right, he can be tough. And that's how he gets his saves down in AAA. And you, know, you look at his AAA numbers, even last year and this year, and he, he can really dominate. He, he's comfortable in the late inning situation, closing out games, but you know, it hasn't fully translated to the big leagues yet, but you see signs of it. And a good time for him to figure it out right here and go at least one strong inning. You guess that he would be it's out there be more for than that, though. Well, you you guess right. he'd be out there for two, maybe three, and then we start drawing straws. There's Cody Ross. Ross came into the ball game late. By the time it's over, he may have played a full nine. He's popped out and struck out looking. Two and two. Interesting tweet that if we have to go to an emergency pitcher, perhaps we should go to Matt Carpenter and let him throw at somebody. <laughs> Revenge time, huh? I like that. Our fans are thinking tonight, Dan. Well, I've also had a tweet that said social media night is turning into social media morning. <laughs> right. So we approach midnight, about 15 minutes away. It has been some kind of odd homestand, hasn't it? Sure has. Long rain delays, which came in Waka's start. Ooh, he just missed on the inside corner. Lead off walk to Cody Ross. Close Didn't look pitch. like he uh, missed by very much. Well, we'll have another look at that pitch. Tried to throw a breaking ball on the inside corner, and it just didn't quite break enough. So leadoff runner aboard here in the 14th. Mentioned Ross, that game. Uh, no steals. He's been caught stealing once. That game for Waka, he's going to think all big league games take eight hours. Freeze playing in for Parra. Showing bunt. Pushes it foul. Diamondbacks have struggled in this department tonight. They have. Not getting the bunt down hurt him earlier. Really, they haven't been very good at situational hitting tonight either. Stranded eight. The Cardinals have stranded 13. In the air, and a smart play by Freeze. He'll get the lead man and take Ross off the bases. Really nothing that Ross can do in that spot. Reese catches it. 
could be a double play at first and lets it drop and then caught no man's land. Yeah, he's trying to, Ross doesn't quite know what to do. And David does not have the ability. It's too late. And Ross gets a good enough jump. There are times where he can actually throw it to first first if he's just barely off the first base bag. And then you've got him in a rundown. David thinking that is a possibility, but Ross figured it out quickly enough to make that the wrong move. David gets the smart out. Now Parra, who's five for 12 in stolen bases, is aboard. And stung Yachty, maybe on the thumb. And a long night for Yachty behind the plate. One look at that. There's, the, oh yeah, he caught that in a bad spot. Could hear Steve Sachs yelling back all the way up here. Mm -hmm. Pretty good base runner himself. Good suggestion from a Cardinal fan who believes it might be a good idea to Yachty for Yachty to go ahead and take his suspension tomorrow, withdraw his appeal, catching 14 plus innings today. Just call it an off day and give him a day's off day's rest. Might be good for him. Inside to Gregorius. Three and one as Marte is battling the strike zone. Three balls and one strike. Popped foul out of play. Expect par to run here. Three and two, one out. Not that worried about Gregorius hitting into a double play if you're Kirk Gibson, but. Getting a little movement. In the 14th. I expect he'll go. Not going. Can only be interpreted as respect for Yadi or Mane. They want to start the runner with one out. And it's a 3 2 pitch. 
On its way, runner not going, and he almost hit him. About to visit Derek Lilliquist. Now there's no help in the bullpen really for Victor Marte. Randy Choate has not pitched yet, but you're not going to use him situationally in a game like this. This inning is Marte's period. They would need him if the Cardinals are unable to score to pitch more than this. So Derek Lilliquist trying to get him settled, get him straight. Runners at first and second. Goldschmidt at the plate. A pair of doubles and a walk tonight. Those doubles are back in the fifth and the seventh. Outfield is straight away. Cardinals have turned a double play. And there's strike one. Here's the 0 1 pitch by Victor Marte. He blew it right by him for strike two. Just making sure you're still with me, uh, Rick. I knew that Red Bull would kick in at some point. Oh, yeah. O2 pitch. I was thinking of a position player that could throw for the Cardinals and Descalso comes to mind and he threw in high school and in college. We've seen he's got a very good arm. And just thinking of guys in general not necessarily tonight but if you were down to a position player he would next month the whatever the case may be and he's also the emergency catcher now that would be some treat mm -hmm. to watch him do both at the same time but. You had to take a choice of the guys on the field right now to be an emergency pitcher and of course we're thinking ahead here. Who would it be? So Yachty with an important block here again keeping that runner. Second base and I'm sure he's giving Marte an earful here. That was not a polite conversation. Not at all. Teammates, though, talking. I, I like it. A 2 2 pitch on its way. Up the middle, base hit. Diamondbacks will take the lead. It's 7 6. Base hit, Goldschmidt. Run scores. It's Para 7 6 here in the 14th. Well, the walks certainly have hurt Marte in this inning. Goldschmidt having a big night. His third hit. Up the middle. Para runs well. Looking ahead, the Cardinals will have Molina, Freeze, and John Jay. So keep it one run game. Absolutely. 7 6, Arizona. Now Montero. Well, maybe that's a positive. You know, Heath Bell has been roughed up by St. Louis at Miami last year. Then that Miami series here, and certainly in the first series in Arizona. Oh my! In Arizona, it was he, he was so low at that point, getting booed by his home 
hometown crowd. With Putts being on the DL, he has been reinstated as the closer. He has nine saves on the season. He's in the back of his mind, the Cardinals' recent success that they've had against him. He can't not know them. 0-4, ERA over 11, 21 games. Molina, three for nine with a home run off of Bell. David Fries, 0 for two. We'll see those two coming up first. That's a foul ball. And then John Jay, John Jay is one for three, and he has a home run. We heard the same thing about Heath Bell that we've heard about Axford in Milwaukee. They're both pitchers that lost their curveball. And when they lost the feel and the grip of their curveball, they found out that their fastball, even though it was a good pitch for both of them, wasn't enough. And perhaps he's refound that particular grip. We'll see. Both these teams, if it stays this way, regroup for game three. Wonder about the availability of some pitchers tomorrow night. And the Cardinals start that game with Joe Kelly. And you just hope he's efficient and can give you innings. Not really stretched out. Three and two. 93 mile an hour fastball from Victor Marte in that pitch count. Well, nearing 30. Doesn't have fastball command tonight. That's that's his problem. He's, he's throwing decent breaking pitch, but the, when you don't have the fastball command, you throw too many pitches. And then you're just kind of hoping for something good to happen. Montero, a dangerous hitter. Cardinals needed to hit one on the ground. Marte gets the strikeout. Popped up to the right side. Martin Prado. As you say, Dan, the goal here, keep it one run, attainable. Got to believe you can get the Heath Bell. Can't afford another one. Finish him off. It's made Yachty work here in this inning. Sure has. So Bell continuing to throw in the bullpen. And a ground ball that is hit to short. Cosma makes the play. It's Molina. Freeze. Jay coming up. Two of those three owning a home run off a of Heath Bell. The big righty coming in when we come back on Fox Sports Midwest.
out. We may not be done yet, Dan. Nope. And we flash back to rough outing for Bell. That long home run by John Jay, third of an inning, 20 pitches, three runs. They were earned. He gave up that home run to Jay. Jay, by the way, is due a third in this inning against Heath Bell. J.J. Putz is out with an injury, so Bell has been inserted as their closer. It's our Chevy call to the pen. Twenty eight saves and thirty eight opportunities the last two years for Bell, but he has converted eight of his last nine. He also gave up a home run to Pete Cosma in that game who's due up fourth. And that one was to center field. It's a long ways away in Arizona. And Molina drives it down the right field line and that's fair off the wall slipping is para. And Yachty is in with a double. The tying run is in scoring position. I'm telling you, it's not over yet. But you've got one of the hottest hitters in this lineup in David Freeze. What a start to the inning. Bottom of the 14th or any time. Yachty taking the first pitch into the corner. There's your gold Glover again, struggling. In the corner, he's had a tough series, hasn't he? And he has three errors on the year too. So, a little jumpy defensively is Gerardo Parra, but David Freeze, who's had a big night, four straight hits, has seen his average climb from 209 on May 16th to 282 at the moment. Move him over or drive him in, or maybe just win it. First pitch to freeze instead a check on Yachty. I like that space between the first base bag and Goldschmidt. Seen freeze do that before trying to yeah. hit the ball the other way hit one right over the first base bag. Up and into freeze remember Carpenter's been hit three times tonight. Just as I said that Goldschmidt took about three giant steps backwards. His career at Bush Stadium. Three blown saves. The tying run Molina at second base. Extra innings. Not the time Rick for retribution. No. Cardinals perspective however absolutely tomorrow not. could be a different story can't let a guy get hit three times in a game agreed it'll be handled discreetly one one pitch Singles in a row for Freeze. That almost hit him. And it's two and two. A lot of pitches inside on Cardinal batters. The two two in the dirt. And what a play there. Montero keeps it in front. Yachty. Had a very good secondary lead, but Montero, noted as a very good all around player, makes uh, one of the biggest plays of the night right here. He's also a durable catcher, a lot like Yadi or Molina. These guys want to be behind the plate all the time. No rest. Molina was ready if it got away from him. Jay is on deck. The count is three and two. The pitch to David Freeze. Big strikeout for Bell. 
So Freeze could not advance the runner nor drive him in. And there's one away. David gets tied up. Inside corner, good spot. So John Jay shoots one foul and into the seats. Watch out. Looks like the uh, velocity from Heath Bell has returned a little bit. Didn't have that, that jump that we I saw agree. earlier this year. Outfield fairly deep for John Jay. A situation like this, you might think about pinch running for Molina, but you're down in players to be uh, used as Jay chops it towards third. Molina back to the bag. Just barely. You know, really, that's the kind of play. They could have got Molina. Well, he and took taken off. away that lead runner and kept Jay at first. Prado has the ball. Yachty is about 40% of the way to third base. A good quick throw and they'd have had him at second. Prado decides perhaps because of his angle that he doesn't want to throw and risk hitting Yachty in the back which infielders often decide and he decides to just go ahead and get the easy out and trust his reliever with Cosma. There's the home run we mentioned off of Bell that came in April. How about one in June. Cardinals have had their opportunities in this game and in extra innings. Stranded 13. Can Pete deliver? Check swing. Second time he's done that tonight. That little check swing. Trying to go one and three with a two run homer here. If not, they go to 0 and 4 in extra innings, Dan. Hit out of play. Promising start to this inning has turned a bit sour. That leadoff double by Yadier Molina. He's standing at second. Cardinals down to their final strike. The 0-2 to Pete Cosma. Here it comes. And that's the ball game as Bell picks up the save. Arizona wins a marathon tonight, 7-6. To Cardinals did a very nice job out of their bullpen for the most part. They finally bent a bit in the 14th. Marte gives up a run, takes the loss, but the Cardinals had... Outstanding relief from Manus Rosenthal, Mujica, and Butler, but they can't avoid going 0 and 4 in extra inning games. 14 hits for St. Louis, but they strand at 14 and they lose at 7-6. Post game show next. <laughs> 